What's up? It's your boy Rampage Jackson. I'm here with the best co-host, Bear DeGidio. We're here. We got another amazing guest, but Rampage, before we go into this guest, we are having the biggest sale of the year, jackson.com up to 50% off site-wide, the best-selling chain stacks, our best-selling iced out chains, sweat proof, custom class, durable, made to be worn every day, and styles for everybody from bracelets to chains. Make sure you guys go check out jackson.com up to 50% off site-wide right now. And don't forget, if you're looking for all the limited edition clothing, you can go to jacksonclub.com. You can use promo code YT15 for 15% off. And you can catch the shorts that we've been training in, the jackets, the eyewear, everything that the guests have been wearing. We appreciate everybody's support. Before we jump right into this podcast with this amazing guest, we just want to say thank you for everything you guys have been doing. Leave comments and make sure you guys tag us on Instagram if you've been picking up some pieces. Me and Bear is in the house once again at Jackson Podcast, and we got a very special guest, Demetrius Johnson, a.k.a. Mighty Mouse. Hey. I know you got a bunch of kids and you married. We were just talking about that. Yep. But I got a serious question for you. Have any of your kids ever made a mistake and call you Mickey Mouse? No. All the fans do, though. <laughs> I, I, I was just in Disneyland. They're like, Mickey Mouse? Like, it's mighty motherfucker. Uh, and, and then someone was talking to me and said, Mickey, I said, who the fuck is who the fuck is Mickey? He goes, oh, I'm sorry, sir. Mighty Mouse. Okay, glad you got it right. Man, I get I get called I get called Randy Jackson all the damn time. <laughs> Oh, from American Idol? <laughs> no, that, I think that's why I think. I'm like, Randy, do I really? I'm from, like, from American no, Idol. I'm like, that's a no, dog. Yeah, yeah. Like, you look like him. I don't look nothing like Randy Jackson, bro. Doesn't he? Nah, he's not that dark. Thank you. And, and Randy Jackson doesn't have a beard. This is a... Thank this you. Is, this is, a, you know, a specimen of an a, a, See, yeah. of an athlete. You, you Randy me. Jackson is overweight, probably has high cholesterol. Thank you. Thank you. He, See, he probably won't make fighters, it we stick yeah. together. Conrad. That's a good man. Yes. But I think they get a mix up with Randy Couture and Rampage Jackson. So they call me, I've been called you Rambo. You don't look anything like Randy Couture. Let me stop, <laughs> let me stop like, you right Caucasian there. Where's Caucasian here? <laughs> but where's Randy Jackson coming from? You, you'd be surprised how many times I got called Randy Jackson. I almost got in a uh, big argument at a lady at uh, in Anaheim at one at the motocross because mm-hmm. she, she thought I was Rashad Evans. <laughs> and, and I was like, lady. You guys, he has dreads now. Yeah. So we, but this back in the day, right? Oh, okay, okay. And, and I was like, lady, I, I am. I she, said, she said, are you Rashad Evans? I was like, no. Yeah. She said, yes, you are. She yeah. thought I was just being like. Yeah, yeah, trying, trying to, to hide. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I do that when people ask me, if, if people ask me, are you Rampage Jackson? I say no. If they don't yeah. know, I just say no, yep, right? same. So Better. normally I would have done that. She would have had a good argument if she would have said Rampage. Mm-hmm. But I was like, lady, I am <laughs> not Rashad Evans. She said, yes, you are. You just don't want to, you don't want to take pictures with her. I was like, listen, lady. I, I can assure you, I am not Rashad Evans. Yeah. She, and we almost, she, like, she wanted to fight me, for yeah. real. <laughs> yeah. And then she was walking off, and, and and she told some dude, like, look, he's a dick. He he act like he's not Rashad Evans. The guy looked at him and said, that's Rampage Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, goes, she goes, I'm the dick. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm like, get away, Karen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that happens all the time. Like, people come to me like, oh, man, you, uh, you're Demetrius Johnson. I'm like, nah, wrong black guy. And they're like, nah, nah, it's you. And I was like, nah, seriously. It, it's not me. He goes, oh, we look just like him. <laughs> then it'll go off. And then sometimes I'll be taking pictures with people. And then someone like, oh, you know, everybody's crowded around and taking pictures of me. And then there's a person on the outside goes, you know, I'm going to get a picture. I don't know who he is. I'm going to get a picture. I'm like, well, what did you do? I'm like, oh, I'm a... I run a pharmaceutical company. They're like, really? I'm like, yeah, I'm a CEO. And he goes, well, what drug? I'm like, Mel Enhancement. Like, if you have a trouble in the bedroom, just, you know, look up my company and we'll take care of you and you and your significant other one will have a good life. Goes, oh, <laughs> big fan, let me get a picture of you. Take a picture of my wife. goes, why do you do that? I was like, working on my acting, babe. I want to let people know that uh, I can do different things. So it's fun I've to do it. I've done, that so, I've done that so many times. One time me and Tiki was in Nashville and these people were taking pictures. We was at for one of the UFC fights, and this and this older um, Mexican lady wanted the picture. I knew she didn't know who I was. I was yeah. like, I'm like, oh, you know who I am? And she was like, she was like, yeah. I was like, what's my name? And she looked at her husband. <laughs> I was like, I like, do you know what I do? And she was and she was like, no. I said, oh, my name King Kong Ding Dong. I got the biggest dick in porn. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, she was so embarrassed. I was like, you see all the pictures? She's like, yeah. <laughs> And like, she wants it more now. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it before. I've done it before. This guy's out of control. I love it. I love it, man. Every 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 single time we've always been together, when it was in the UFC, Xbox, SEMA, we've always had a great time. Except for the first time. Oh, I didn't like you. I didn't like I didn't like you for, for a long, for a long period of time. He was he was the only fighter sponsored by Xbox, and he knew I like gaming. I asked him, hey bro, who can know with Xbox? Let me get some of that sponsorship too. Let me he's like, he, you know what he said? 
He didn't say, I try. I see what I, he said, no. <laughs> See how he I, think, I think I said something. I'm like, hey, I just got to this cheddar. Let the let the mouse no. get his cheese first, and then I might slide you some of the he crumbs. Said, no, left. no. He, yeah. looked, he looked me dead in the eyes. He said, no. Yeah, I can't well, do that. Well, you finna share the Xbox money? Well, he, he, here's the thing. So a lot of people don't know this. Some of the times I was when I was sponsored by Xbox, I never got paid. Right, I never got paid. So the reason why, like when I fought uh, John Dotson, it was a launch of the Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider and Xbox. That was kind of like the first. No, the first one was when I fought Kid Yamamoto on Facebook. And then when I, I think the second time, the next time they sponsored me was when I actually got paid was when I fought John Dotson because they did Tomb Raider. There was an activation there, right? But a lot of the times when I was rocking Xbox, I didn't get paid. The reason why I did that is because I wanted my name to be associated with that brand. And they didn't have the funding to be able to sponsor an athlete at that time. How did Xbox ain't got the funding? Because the way Xbox was working back in the day is that they would only be able to have the funding or the budget to sponsor an athlete when they would launch a game. Uh -huh. So Tomb Raider, that was a 2013 Chicago, I did that. It was like $20,000 for the sponsorship. And then when I fought, uh, I remember when I fought, uh, what's his name, Ali Bagratinov, a sponsor by Xbox. All those times I fought, I wasn't sponsored by them, but I didn't want to be the athlete going out there searching for Condom Depot, screws, yeah. all that stuff. I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep on rocking Xbox because I'm loyal, and I'm hoping one day that somebody up in Xbox sees my worth and I'm like, you know, we're going to bring you on. I'm going to give you this big of a contract. So a lot of the times when I wore Xbox, there was no money to give to you, baby. So I don't, you know, I know. Right, if, right. if I bring you to the table, you're like, I want $70,000. It goes, this motherfucker ain't getting nuts. So you think you will get 70000 So, But that was just me taking a leap of faith, hoping one day that, you know, Xbox like, hey, we're going to keep on, you know, sponsoring, Bro, you, right? You, you did that because I was so jealous. I was so <laughs> jealous. When, you had, when you had the Xbox on your shorts, that was so huge. I was like, wow, this guy is really mainstream. Did, you, did it end up working out? You ever get No, that? no, no. It never did. Like I said, only like if I can count on how many times. So... I remember uh, the Tomb Raider one. I remember the Call of Duty Modern Warfare. They had a budget for that. So when there was a big game launch and when I was fighting, then I would be able to get some type of compensation. But there's a lot of times when I fought Ali Bagatina, when I fought Chris Carriasso, uh, when I fought Kyojo Horiguchi. I believe mean, when I fought Kyojo Horiguchi, that's when the, uh, the Reebok deal came through. And then there was a Bud Light deal that kind of overtook that. And I was like, you know, I'll do the Bud Light. But a lot of them, like, I think I only got paid Maybe two times, three times. They, should at, least, they so. should at least put you in a Call of Duty game. That'd be dope. I'll be, I'll be about that life. Yeah. I'll be you dope. Still, do you still game? Absolutely. Absolutely. What you playing? What you playing now? I'm playing Street Fighter Six, and I'm playing the new Call of Duty. Bro, you so good at Street Fighter. I remember that one time I played you. You embarrassed the hell out of me, bro. <laughs> what, what, were we streaming that time? Yes, we were streaming. Man, you but but, 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 but hey, you, you gave it to me too. Rainbow Six Siege. Oh yeah, man. Oh that man, was I was like, I was like, my squad versus your squad. <laughs> <laughs> we got work. We got. Oh work. yeah, man. I used to be the man of that game. I, I I still love it, but I don't have that many people play with it no more. No man, That's, it's still it's still a good game. It's a great game. It's still to this day. It still have a server. It still got a huge following and a fan base that Rainbow Six Siege is undefeated because it's that and, and Escape from Tarkov are probably the highest like FPS like yeah. intelligence you have to have. You have to know the map. You have to listen to yeah. the sounds. It's it's a phenomenal Bro, game. I couldn't get to Escape. It was just too it was too hard. One time I tried to go across a bridge and somebody <laughs> just kept sniping me from somewhere. I, yep. I couldn't even go across the bridge and I never played the game again. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I didn't know that you guys were such good friends over streaming. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We yeah. we play we play the UFC game and he didn't know how to grapple, right? So I'll take his what? ass down and I was like, I was like, ah, I got your armor. He goes, fuck this game, mighty boss. I ain't play this game anymore. What, what yeah. character would you use? Uh, well, you couldn't intermix uh, the uh, weight classes, so yeah. I I can't remember who I was playing. Yeah, as. yeah. We go all different weight classes. Yeah. I I will play with myself. Wait. You it's okay. Go ahead, say it. Go ahead, wait, say wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. That was a, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That was a, that was a verbal typo. Okay. I, I would I would use my character. Okay. There you go. There you go. Yeah. There you have go. Have you ever played with yourself in that game? Uh, no, I haven't. No. <laughs> no, no, no. I typically do that off stream or when I'm playing no games. Um, but I'll play. I, I, you're gonna say I'll play myself, but I do play as my. <laughs> you I do. With yourself. I do play yeah. as my character when I do play the game against the fans and. I could imagine that. That would probably be pretty lit to just use I, your own character. I know. How surreal is that being a gamer and and having your own character in a video game? Oh, it's amazing. I, I think that's just uh, a stepping stool because my ultimate goal would be able to be in, like, Street Fighter. Like, I played yeah. that game since I was 
you know, in diapers with my my sister, my brothers. Um, Street Fighter, I believe, is probably the pinnacle of fighting games because, you know, you have the simulation of a fighting game, which is very hard to simulate a fighting game, especially when we're fighters, right? Like, I ain't going to get tired. I'm not going to throw my high kick like that. I'm not going to do that. But when it comes to, like, Street Fighter, it's just, it's just on another level. Then you have Tekken. Tekken is amazing Tekken. as well. Tekken is great. Tekken. It has its own. I think Tekken... Uh, ca uh, captures the essence of different martial art forms like yeah. kickboxing, Muay Thai, boxing. That game is... I heard your feelings in Tekken, especially on arcade in Japan. Yeah, I know. I, I, I heard know. your feelings. You, you got me in Street Fighter. I heard your yeah. feelings yeah, in Tekken. Yeah, he did. Though. He did. He just oh, beat me. Oh, you got the best of them? Yeah. I, 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 I used to be really good at Tekken. Tekken's hard, man. Tekken is... If you're not good at... Like, I'm used to holding back mm -hmm. for blocking, right? But Tekken... You you have to be neutral. Yeah. So if you move, you don't get to block. So you have to be neutral. So you blah, 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 and you gotta let the you yeah. gotta let the fucking sticks but you, go. But you gotta hold down if you want to block your legs though. Yeah. Is that yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, ah. yeah, yeah. He he don't know nothing. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't game. I play Call of Duty a little bit. Hey, that's I played Halo growing up. That's yeah, a bit. Yeah. Halo's but legit. I, I'll call him at like midnight. He'll be like, Yo, I can't talk. I'm like, What are you doing? I think he has a girl or something. He's like, I'm playing. I'm playing. Yeah. Yeah. One in the morning. I thought you like a girl or something. Yeah. I'm playing video games. That's when you got a true gamer. I was like, What you doing, man? Girl, I was like, nah, it's game that bad. Yeah, yeah. She, she, she's waiting in the bed next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but I, I would, I would use your character in Street Fighter, especially like, um, after that move you did and what one when you what did you do? You slammed the guy and you went straight to the umbra. Uh, and that was against um, Ray Borg, uh, the Mighty Wiz Bar. Beautiful submission, pulled off. I learned it from Matt Hume, and yeah, it was probably one of my favorite submissions I've ever done. Just because I've trained it so many times in the gym. Never, you know, when I was in in the pro leagues, social media isn't what it is today, right? You see everybody, this is what I'm working on, da 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 And then they go out and they do it. For me, I was always focused on just being in the lab, working, honing my skill. And then that time in that fight, the opportunity presented itself and I just threw homeboy up, got that submission and it was- um, That was beautiful. Perfect. That was beautiful. But what is it? It's like a suplex to an armbar? Suplex and armbar, like in wrestling, if somebody does a sit out, you suck them back. You suck them back and you yeah. pin them. Um, hey, yo. What? <laughs> suck him back and pin him? You you suck the dude back, then you pin him? No! Them? Wow. Good Lord. What What is going on this here? This man watches too much next fight. He goes, I'm trying to get my dick sucked from behind. I never had that done before. <laughs> is that your fantasy? You trying to get your dick sucked from behind? Nah, I'm not done. That is crazy. Nah. He, yo, he is so analytical with your technique. He broke you down real quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's suck back from wrestling. And then usually when people lose their balance, they go like this. They, they, they want to catch their balance. And it was an opportunity for me to basically display that that technique is something that Matt Hume taught me. And he did it to me. That's how I learned it. Like, we were grappling. And one day, he just threw my little ass up and caught my coming arm bar and submitted me. I was like, what the hell did you just do? And he goes, well, you're so good now. I can't just do a normal arm bar against you. I have to think outside of the box. And luckily, like, my mind, I'm like a sponge, and I have a high IQ when I fight. And he was like, I can teach you this because you're athletic enough and you know how to implement this move in a fight. Bro, I, I noticed how smart you are in fight and, and what type of mind you got in that one fight when you um, knocked dude out with that flying knee. Mm. Because I think I think the fight before, it was a rematch, right? It was a rematch, and yeah. And he, he hit you with a knee, right? Yep. And you and I knew it right there. I saw you <laughs> wanted to get him back the same <laughs> way. The same way. Like, so most people just... They just want the win. They just like, yeah. I want to beat this guy, but you like, no, I'm gonna knock you out the same way with worse. Yeah. I think when that knee happened, you know, obviously different rules of one championship, right? You can need a grounded opponent. Something I wasn't very familiar with because how do you train that in the gym? Like, okay, Rampage, I'm gonna rock you. And when you fall down, I'll be throwing knees in your face. So when I got rocked in that first fight against him, I was trying to get up. I did an underhook, horrible technique. Underhook, he he timed it perfectly, landed that knee. Then after that fight, I went off fought Rotting, and then I was ready to fight him again. And my mindset was just in a whole different level that when I moved and I hit him with that right hand, and he was backwards, I was like, oh, I know what this is. <laughs> and I threw him. Like, if you go back and watch it, if you watch it with slow motion, you see my face like, oh, yeah, here it comes. And I just, I just threw everything I had in that knee. And then just the walk off was just like, oh, yeah. I just knew it was like, it was game over. And as I spent so many years training with Matt, and now I do more studying of fighting, it's like, you don't have to hit as hard as you, you don't have to try to 
hit as hard as you every punch right? every punch right? Right, right you you get yourself in a position where you can when i'm there then i'm like okay now i'm gonna drop everything into that punch so that fight when i move and i hit him and he finally opened up and i caught him with the right hand it was probably a good amount of energy but once i knew he was off balance i was like, okay i'm throwing everything i have like if, if i would have need him i would probably if i need him and if he would have got back up it's like i'm not done i'm like <laughs> Okay, let me take five good breaths, and then I'm going to be ready to go again. So I knew when that knee landed, it was everything I had, and I knew he was out. Man, that takes a lot of um, experience and maturity to know in an MMA fight that every punch don't have to be powerful. Boxers, they know that, but for MMA fighters, oh, yeah, it's, we, every punch, we're trying to end the fight. Yep, absolutely. And I think it just comes to their territory because it's you look at the infancy stages of mixed martial arts. For me, when I got exposed to it, it was watching heavyweights, like watching you, um, you and Vanellie go at it in Pride, uh, Crow Cop, Fedor Emelianenko, even Kimbo Slice back in the streets, Jorge Masvidal, where they're, bah, 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 they're throwing hands. And there's so much of mixed martial arts that's going on with the wrestling, jujitsu, uh, kickboxing, Muay Thai. So I just think, you know, it's just ingrained in us to throw every shot has to be powerful. Uh, Muay Thai, um, speaking of that, you, um, you fought this Muay Thai guy. Right? You fought a Muay Thai Raw Thang. Yeah. That's his name? Raw, Raw, Raw Thang. Thang? You Raw. fought a dude named Raw Thang? <laughs> Not Raw Thang. Raw Tang. Oh, my bad. Raw, Raw Tang. Raw Tang. Yeah, there and, you go. He was, he was a Muay, straight up Muay Thai. Muay Thai. And you had the first round Muay Thai, then... Second round MMA. Yeah. I, I, I watched it. I was like, that's, that's very interesting. I'm yeah. glad that MMA is doing stuff like this. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's not MMA doing stuff like this. Is one championship doing stuff like that? Yeah, so, they do stuff different over there. They do stuff differently over there. Like, so people out there, first time listening to me talk about uh, mixed martial arts on the Jackson podcast. One championship is an Asian based promotion where they celebrate mix, uh, not mixed martial arts, but martial arts in general. So they have multiple divisions. They have mixed martial arts. They have a kickboxing division. They have a Muay Thai division. And they also have a, sub a submission wrestling division as well. And so every once in a blue moon, you have two big stars, myself and another one in Muay Thai, Rod Tang, and they're like, hey, it was a 1X, 10-year anniversary for those guys. They wanted to put on a, a special a special fight. So they came to me and offered me, and like, hey, would you want to fight Rod Tang in Muay Thai? You want to fight with the Muay Thai belt? I was like, be honest with you guys, I'm grateful, I'm honest, I'm, I'm grateful, I appreciate it, but I don't care about being a Muay Thai champion. Like, I have no interest being a world champion, champion in Muay Thai. Give that to somebody else who wants it. And I was like, but I'll fight Rod Tang in Muay Thai. We'll just do, you know, big gloves. Do three threes. That's fine. That's not even that's not even two rounds of mixed martial arts. They're like, ah, we'll come back to you. I was like, all right, whatever. They called me back and I'm like, how about this? How will we do a mixed rules fight? We do first round Muay Thai, second round MMA, third round Muay Thai, fourth round MMA. And I said, okay, well, how long are the rounds? So like three minutes. I'm like, okay, that's that's amateur for MMA. And they're like, first round is Muay Thai. And I was like, I looked at my wife and she goes, do you want to do it? I was like, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. And then every, <laughs> everybody was like, why did you do mixed martial arts the first round? And I was like, guys, if I can't make it through the first round in Muay Thai against Rod Tang, then it is what it is. Like, I, I get knocked out. But at least I tried, right? I was like, I'm going to go out there and try and see what happens. And it was probably, and the only reason I took that fight is because he's one of the biggest stars under that promotion. And I was like, it's going to do amazing numbers. It's going to, it's going to, I'm going to go out there and fight. So I, I know my brand's going to come out. I'm going to go out there and produce. I know he's going to bring it. So I'm like, let's make it, let's, let's run it. And then it was great. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't find the fight, but I saw clips. How, how did you do in the, in the first round? How did you do? I feel like I did all right. Yeah. Checked a lot of kicks, kind of went toe to toe. You definitely did. I got rocked a couple of times. I know that. Yeah, he, definitely did. <laughs> he didn't run from the fight. He fought. Yeah. He stayed, he stayed with him. I mean, the dude has like 200 plus professional Muay Thai, Muay Thai wins fight. by the yeah, time yeah. he's like I heard he was a badass. How, how do you watch one over here? So you can watch uh, one championship on Amazon Prime. Uh, they have big fights on Amazon Prime, and that's 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Obviously, check your local listing or whatever your time zone is. And then if you if it's not a Prime Prime fight, then you can watch it on their YouTube or the one championship app. They have Friday night fights every Friday in Lupini Stadium I'm in Thailand. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna have to get that app because it's it's amazing fights. The Rotolos are on it. Marcus Bouchesh is on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of the baddest fighters on the planet are in one now. They put together an amazing show. And one thing about one too that I want to add is 
they have some of the best viewing numbers on social media worldwide That's with all sports. Yeah. And NBA, NFL, UFC, because of the way that they kind of been able to get the country and the kind of the continent behind them of Asia. I mean, they, yeah. they really produce an amazing show. Yeah, and then the biggest thing is like, you know, I was saying they have the, the multiple divisions of combats, right? Of, of martial arts. So you have, like you said, Buchecha, the Rotola brothers, and Mikey Misumichi, they're all under that submission grappling where you have the submission grapplers, enthusiasts who love to watch those guys compete. They watch it there. And then you also have the Muay Thai guys. So you have everybody in Thailand watching Rante. Do you have everybody watching Mertola Brothers? Do you have everybody watching me? So you have so many different eyeballs. So when you look at the UFC, PFL, now that's Bellator, they only offer one product of martial arts, which is mixed martial arts, which is, it's huge in the States. But if you want to look at something different, you watch one championship. I um, so you the first fighter to get traded, right? Yep. The first fighter to get traded, and you that was your plan the whole time to go there, because Matt, Matt, he, your boy, <laughs> keep it real, keep it real. Your, your boy is he is he owner or part owner or something? No, he is uh, he is VP of I think he's uh, uh, VP at the time of um, what's it called uh, operations. Yeah. And so and at the time, so when I was going into that final fight with Henry Cejudo. At the time where the UFC was at with the flyweight division, I've already de defeated everybody. I just did my 11 consecutive title defenses, and I was going to fight Henry Sudo. So it's another rematch. So I had a rematch with John Dotson, a rematch with Joseph Benavides. Um, now it's coming on the rematch with Henry Sudo. So I've already gone through the whole division, and now I'm about to fight Henry Sudo for the second time. And at that time, you know, as you fought for the champ, I don't know what your pay was back when you fought, but they would never let a flyweight at my time make $500,000. Like that was like the standard pay for mixed martial artists for the champion. If you became a champion, it was like, you got that five, five bills plus pay for you points. Mm. So for me, they would never give that to me. And when I lost to Henry Suhudo at the time, Malky was my management. They didn't necessarily are my managers. We, we still uh, work together. We were talking and we're like, he was like, what do you want to do, bro? And I was like, you know what? I want to test. I want to see if they'll let me go. Because at the time, they were talking about getting rid of the UF, that, that division. I'm like, oh, I'm going to scrap it. don't make no money, da 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 mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, well, let me see if I can get out of my contract. And then they were able to make it happen, and they traded me for Ben Askren. And I think it was the best decision that I uh, ever did in my my mixed martial arts career. It was career. stupid for the UFC, though. It yeah. was a stupid trade for the I mean, UFC. I mean, Ben Askren at the time wasn't even in his prime anymore. And when he was in his prime, he was destroying people, just ragdolling people, throwing them around the floor. So I think they wanted to see if he could do that to UFC stars. I mean, there's even a viral clip that Joe Rogan was the one that got you traded. Is that true? See, I talked to Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan says, no, nah, I had nothing to do with it. So you you never know like what the- but What the, did you think he had to do? You think Joe Rogan told the UFC to so, trade you? So when I when I heard that from that Joe Rogan convinced Dana White to do it yeah. was, you know, Joe Rogan was like, dude, just- why not just get Ben Askren to see what's going to happen, right? Like, if you plan on getting rid of the division, when I do it, even though Joe Rogan is one of my biggest fans and he believes in my skill set, I think at the time that, you know, it was Dana White. And, I, you know, and sometimes when I go back and I look at videos of Dana White promoting me, I felt like he did a good job, right? He was like, he, he, this guy's amazing, da-da-da-da. And there were some videos of him shit on me as well. I think he shit on, I, I think yeah, Dana he White shit, shit, yeah, yeah. He shit, he shit on everybody, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. But at the same time, I just wasn't selling in the States, right? I just think the flyweight division just wasn't as popular as it is today. But you look at why is it popular today? You have social media, Instagram, you know, all that stuff just blows up. It goes viral. Uh, could you imagine in 2023, I throw a motherfucker up and arm bar him right now? I mean, when I blasted Adriano the second time with a knee, I just stock yeah. went to the roof. Yeah. When I did the rock thing fight, stock yeah. went to the roof. So my brand has never been, my skill set when I fight has never been like, oh, this guy's garbage. I've always shown up and fought. I just think at the time when I fought, it just wasn't ready for the viewership. I don't know. So I mean, at the time though, I, I think a lot of people were saying that, you know, the UFC wanted you to move up to fight TJ. They yeah. were going to scrap the <clears throat> division. Yeah. TJ's one of the best ever at 135. Yep. You were at 125. Did that, did that, did you ever feel like that was really, they were really trying to push you to do that? Yeah, no, really we had, we, we had conversations about that. And I, I've been pretty open and candid about this, but you know, Sean Shelby, he called me, he says, Hey, want you to fight to Dosha. And I was like, okay, pay me a million dollars. We'll make it happen. Yeah. We'll make it happen. And I even told Dana White that too, before I was about to fight 
uh, Kyojo Horoguchi at the press conference. Um, the big, you know, they used to do this, big, this when they first started doing those big press, press conference. And I was like, man, just give me a million dollars. He goes, I can't give you what you don't bring in. I was like, okay, fair enough. Okay, I understand that. And then fast forward, I beat Kyojo Horoguchi. These keep going on. Me, Sean Shelby are talking. And he says, ah, you, 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 you should fight at Tijidosha. I was like, yeah, pay me a million dollars. Like, no, we can't make that happen. And then Matt said, okay, well, we'll fight TJ, but here's the here's stipulation we want. If TJ doesn't make weight, which we knew he could not make 125 healthy, right? If he doesn't make 125, we fight for his belt. We still, the fight goes on, but we fight for his belt. They're like, oh, no, no, we can't do that. And I'm like, then what, what's, I have no leverage here. All right. Like, what, what's, what's in it for what, you? What's in it for me? Like, same pay, no more money. What's in it for me? And they're like, well, you know, we're just going to close it. like, close the motherfucking division. Close it then. Like, go out there and tell the world, like, hey, guys, we're going to close the division because Dimitri Johnson is not going to fight Tito Dosha. Um, and, and then the fans were like, well, why won't you fight him, Demetrius? I'm like, well, why not? I said, if TJ doesn't make 125 healthy, we get to fight for his belt and they won't pay me a million dollars. Then they'll look at Dana White. I'm like, why don't you pay me a million dollars, Dana White? Well, he don't bring that money in. Okay, well, it looks like you guys have a disagreement. Okay. Move on. Move on. <laughs> so, so you're doing a lot more successful. You, yeah. You're a lot more successful than at one. Oh, one thousand percent. Not not by just them. Like when we talk about the fights, right? When they called me for the Raw Tang Super Fight, it was straightforward. There was no negotiating. It was no. Well, let me get the let me get the MMA fight first. Let me. You know, it was just like, what do you guys want? And they're like, we want to do Muay uh, Muay Thai first, MMA second, et cetera, et cetera. When we got there, they're like, hey. If nobody finishes, <laughs> that's why I love it. They say, hey, if nobody finishes anybody, it's a draw. And I was like, well, better go out there and finish some, finish yeah, him, right? Finish so him in the second round, I'm going to finish the second round. But it's it's just more straightforward. Like, we've had conversations on different fights, and I was like, doesn't interest me. I'm just not interested. And I'm like, okay, no worries. Thank you. Yeah. That's it. It's not like, oh, is he DJ scared? Da, da, da. I was like, I'm not scared. I'm like, the, the most dangerous person on the whole entire roster, I just fought him in his realm for three minutes and then we went in my room and then he didn't make it out of there. But if he wouldn't have made it out, we would have gone again. So yes, I'm more successful over there by just me being uh, competitive and beating their athletes and by just being straightforward and honest. Do, yeah. do you have another fight coming up soon? Uh, not, nothing right now, no. Uh, nothing signed. No. I spend focused on my jujitsu and the gi. I've been like, that's like my new passion right now. Speaking of jujitsu, at like 37, you go, you do a brown belt in the gi. Mm-hmm. What like what force do you want to go do this? You go do a real tournament as a UFC superstar, a one superstar, yeah. mixed martial arts legend, considered the goat. Yeah, you decide yeah. to put on a gi and go fight brown belts who have been training jujitsu their whole life. <laughs> <laughs> like why? So for me, I think there comes a point in time in an athlete's career where you want to do what you want to do. Yeah, right. And I, like spending so many years, and you know, you can contest this as well. Spending so many years getting ready for the next fight. You know, next press conference, next this. I took a step back and I was like, man, what do I want to do? I was like, what gets me hard in the morning? And I was like, <laughs> doing a jiu-jitsu competition. And so I was like, I, I'm, I'm going to go do it. Like, I didn't tell anybody. Like, my, my professor knew. Mm. Nobody knew. I, I like to work in silent. And I just kept on training and training. And then once, like, it kind of came close, I signed up for it. Then, of course, it gets out there. It was, oh, Demis Johnson's doing an IBJJF. You want come get the? You want to come get a piece of the champ? Sign up. And so it blew up. But it's something that I wanted to do, right? Like, being 37, I fought the best of the best in North America. I fought the best of the best in Asia. Now it's like, what does Demetrius want to do? And that's why I did that that tournament. No, you're not doing it for money. It's not. It's no, not there's no money in it. There's no money. There's no money in it. Literally doing it because he wants to be the I best to athlete yeah. in the world. Uh, and Unreal. Don't, yeah, like don't get me wrong. Like money is amazing. It's absolutely. I mean, that's what gets us up every day to work, and that's why I grind on my YouTube, my podcast, and I want to build my brand as big as I can. But I've been very successful and fortunate to make good money where I'm not stressing about the next paycheck. So now I take a step back and I want to like, hey, what do you want to do? Like, what is it you want to do? And then what's jujitsu? And so, yeah. that's good. Yeah. That's yeah. He got he got yeah. passion. He said, you know, it's passion. It's passion. Yeah. He got passion. Yeah. He said, what gets him hard in the morning is jujitsu. I don't love money, but money gets me hard. I, I mean, that does too, and so does my wife. But you know, <laughs> a, a, also my passion right now is just Brazilian jujitsu. Yeah. It, it just is like when I watch it, the 
the stuff you can do in the gi. And I just learned this wow. new, just learned this new lapel choke and I hit it three times in the gym. I was like, oh, sh oh, oh, here we go. And the size difference, the guy's way bigger than me. So it's like, mm. it's just what I am passionate about you right like now. You like the gi. Mm. I love the gi. Wow. I love it. I love watching gi grappling way more than no gi. And, yeah. oh yeah, like right now, like my two passion I love to watch is gi grappling and mixed martial arts like i love i love muay thai but they take so much shots they take way too many concussions it hurts it, it hurts. hurts it muay hurts. hurts yeah and it's like you have 250 fights what are you doing can you imagine those guys they do like three fights in one night some of those i guys? couldn't i it's couldn't so crazy. but see it's the those culture it's it, it's the culture right and for me like i just i'm in a different stage in my life where i'm 37 i got three kids and i put my kids in that position i'm like if my kids are doing Muay Thai, I'm like, what the, f like, and this is where it stems from. Nobody knows this, but when I fought Ian McCall the first time in Australia, we we're, it was a banger. I was like, oh, here we go. 125, find a motherfucker who 532. It's, it's about to go down. And I just went ham. Like we just went slanging and banging, right? I get back to the hotel room. Matt goes, this is my coach, ladies and gentlemen. Matt Hume goes, that was the stupidest fucking thing I ever saw in my life. I was like, what you talking about? I was out there throwing hands. He goes, yeah, and look how many fucking times you got hit. And I, ha I had brother go that night. The room was spinning. My head was hurting. And Matt goes, you have to understand. He goes, you have the skill set to move and not take any damage. W when have we ever shown that getting your ass beat and letting somebody beat you up is cool? I don't teach that at the gym. So once he told me that, when I see people getting beat up, I'm like, concussions. CTE, oh my God. And so now, and then after that fight, my whole style, my whole style changed. Where I'm like, pop, pop, I'm moving. I'm always moving, yeah. not trying to get hit. So now when I see, when I watch guys who do Muay Thai, I'm like, all them concussions. And for me, I've been part of a brain study for 12 years. And I just have my update in my brain. And the guy was like, for 18 years, your brain looking sharp. Yeah, I can tell just by the way he speaks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, for real. No, I can tell. I, it, and it's true that Ian McCall fight is actually interesting because I watched that with a bunch of my guys from Orange County. He's from Dana Point, mm -hmm. and he trained with a lot of my friends down here. And uh, I remember watching them being like, how is Ian putting hands on this guy who's th the great, the GOAT, the man who's just destroying and molly whopping everyone? I was really confused, too, because yeah. Ian's an amazing fighter. Oh, too, yeah, absolutely. For you to sit there and bang with him, I was like... Is this a new strategy or is it? Yeah, that's that good? I told myself, I was like, I'm finally at a weight class. Cause I because I grew up watching everybody bang. I rampage, like it was funny. So when I first started training as an amateur, it was me and my training partner, Drew Brokenshire. Drew Brokenshire had your style. You lock in that motherfucking shell, bah, 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 come up with the left hook and catch people, right? I loved it. We, we were watching when you fought Shogun. Who you just fought everybody, um, Renaud Silva. And my coach was like, okay, you guys need that rampage style. Y'all need that bite down that mouthpiece, get in that shell, do this, and throw them fucking hooks out of there. And then he was like, then you also need Demetra style where you, you, you negate everybody, you run. So when I fought Ian McCall the first time, I was like, all right, it's a rampage style. We're going to start banging. Didn't work out so well for me. You won that one though, right? Huh? You, yeah. Did you win? No, the first one went to a, a, a draw. Mm. And then the second one, I came back and then I just... Mm -hmm. Took him. I won that one easily. That's definitely a rampage style. Rampage is out there. To, oh, he's to out there slaying. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, you got that power too, yeah. baby. I, I'm a brawler. I always like. I always like that. I always like yeah. brawling. I like. I like being right there in the dog fight. I don't know why people are always making fun of me because when I hit pads, you see me close up on the, on my coach. I, I like being inside. Yeah, yeah. It, well, that's what you're. You're one of your best gifts in mixed martial arts, right? Like yeah. you had the power to end a motherfucker, and then you also had good eyes. Right, because when you're in there, you have to see. Yeah. Right, like when it's funny when I work out at a gym and they show your knockout of Vanille Silva literally almost every single day. Oh. When you get in there, bop, 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 and you hit with that left hook and you hit him three more times, uh, you have to have good eyes, right? Mm -hmm. um, and those are the things that separated you from the other athletes at that time, right? Yeah, and I think so, I think most fighters they probably close their eyes when they're getting punched. Yeah, but, but the cover and roll, you know, you naturally close your eyes. Yeah, so you it's, don't it's, see, it's you, a natural. Yeah. It's a natural. But the cover and roll, I've I've been doing it so much. I like to see. I want yeah. to keep my eyes open. Yeah, yeah. Like so that's what that's why I think it's good. Like when you, that's one of the things that you had, and that's one of the things we try to implement when I was coming up as an amateur. Is like you, you get in the pocket and you're seeing and you're throwing hands, mm -hmm. you're throwing good combinations, and you're also knocking people out. When other people try to do it, they can't do that because they don't have the power and they also don't have the eyesight that you do. Mm -hmm. In terms of the cover and roll. What uh, what kind of technique, what kind of style do you need when you go against one of the 
these opponents that you've been calling out, like Bradley Martin? So the biggest thing... <laughs> See the biggest yeah, like thing six, with uh six, six, six four six five like three hundred pounds. I didn't call him out. He called me out, and this is Brendan Shop. <laughs> so do you know who Bradley Martin, Bradley Martin is? I heard the name. Before. He's the big the big fitness. Oh yeah, fitness yeah, 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 yeah. I know. So, you're so about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a nice guy, I, and then we're talking. Me and uh, Brendan Shop, and he was saying, "I'm, but I'm two sixty though. But I'm two sixty though. That's his whole gimmick. I'm two sixty though, and so and he's also athletic." And I actually grappled a gentleman in over in um, over in, uh, in my last seminar. He's like 230, so I got 30 more pounds to get. But the type of style you would need for him is like one, he's way bigger. So you got to calculate that into the, the equation. But the biggest thing that I have going for me over a guy who's 260, I wouldn't just say Bradley Martin, is just my skill set, right? Granted, like if he runs and fucking tackles me, then it's like, okay, I can blow my rib out. But mm. my jujitsu is what's going to separate me from getting to his legs or tearing his heel hook or whatever it may be. But I'll always believe in my, my skill set over somebody who's 300 pounds. Just because you're bigger than me doesn't mean you're necessarily going to beat me. And then his thing all stems from a street fight. Like, I'm like, okay, what's a street fight? Let's, let's, let's be honest. What is a street fight? I was like, because I have a friend who carries two fucking daggers on his his belt line and he gets in a street fight. He goes, I wish a motherfucker would because he got jumped. <laughs> right. He got jumped by three people. So now he carries two daggers on his belt. We, we went out and had lunch and it's the first time I meet him and he, he sat down. He goes, I was like, dog, why you got two fucking daggers on your belt line? He goes, oh, I got jumped. And I was like, okay. And he goes, yeah, I got jumped. And now if I get jumped again, I'm going to stab somebody or... You try to jump my father-in-law in the fucking public, he, you're going to get shot. So let's clarify. What is a street fight? Then once we go that route, then we can, you know. Yeah, you're pulling out a gun. Yeah, you're pulling out a gun. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. in Washington State, there's um, the mutual combat law. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. Tell me. So the mutual combat law is that, let's say me, you're walking down the street, or let's say we're, we're just having a disagreement. I say, you want to fight? And you say, yes. We can fight and none of us will get arrested. But once you fall and hit the ground, the fight's over. Mm -hmm. So we have a law. There's a law. It's a mutual I think they got that in Texas as well. Yeah. I've, I've heard about that. Yeah, it's a mutual combat law. So there's a gentleman, uh, he's a superhero. His name is Phoenix Jones. He's a superhero in uh, Seattle. So he was walking and this guy goes, I'll kick your fucking ass, man. I'll, I'll kick your ass. He goes, you want to fight? And he, he goes, I'll kick your fucking ass. He goes, we have a mutual combat law. Would you like to engage in mutual combat with me? He goes, let's fucking do it, man. He goes, okay. Took his shit off. Move and he did MMA. The guy didn't know that he did MMA. He went, kicked him in the leg. Ah, oh. ah. <laughs> oh. And he goes, pop, pop, drops him. The guy gets knocked out and he goes, I'm done. Walked away. Cop was sitting right there too. Walked away. That was it. So, so the cops have they have to know that a lot. A lot of cops don't know the laws. Yeah, but yeah, there's a mutual combat law, and it was on. Uh, it was hilarious. I was at California. Home. Got that damn law. I wish they did. We need to look that people, up. People don't be so loud. No, we got the law. If you. Put a little finger on someone, you go to jail for life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, 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 it's got a mutual. Strict I mean, it can't it can't be two verse one, three yeah. verse one. It has to be right. one verse one. You both have to mutually agree. Like you want to fight, and like yeah, let's let's fucking fight. But once somebody hits the ground, it's over. You I can't, think that's the way it should be. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you should be able to smack someone or punch someone if they're talking loud to you in the street. But well, now, I mean, well, I, I want I want to go that far. You, you just walk away. You used to be the bigger man. Yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah. well, then people wouldn't talk so loud. You, you said him. this to Bobby Green. You told Bobby Green. <laughs> what, what, I, what, I said to Bobby Green. No, what, what, what did I say to Bobby Green? <laughs> he said, yeah, let's get it on. No, no, no. Bobby Green was talking about bitch. Like we were saying, yeah. somebody, somebody call, no, 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 no. Somebody called you a nigga. No. Now, that's one. what it was. If somebody yeah. call, if somebody, I said, somebody called me a nigga, I won't, get, I won't fight them because they try to call me a nigga. I'll I, yeah. I let them off. So, but then he got me at the end. He said, but what's my call you a bitch? I'm like, oh, damn, we fight. <laughs> see, see, <laughs> see. It's different, though. For me, it's like, it's just not worth it. They're just words, yeah. right? Like, I was, me and my wife were walking around. Some guy's walking by. He goes, nice tits. And wife goes, you what he said? It's like, yeah, he said you got nice tits. I agree with him. Like, like, like yeah, I agree. You, you got nice tits. <laughs> well, no, I'm going to go kick his fucking ass. I mean, I can go do that. But then what's what else is going to follow me whooping right. his ass, right. right? If somebody says, oh, you're a black motherfucking bitch. They're just disrespecting me. I'm like, if I go out and, and fight him, what what am I proving? Yeah, right. Because no, guess what? Sense. There's another 20 motherfuckers out there who can't wait to call me that. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. and, I see. I agree with him. I, no, yeah. I agree. I agree. So, so for me, it's like, it's like, it's like I saw some the other day. Anybody who's doing good in life, anybody, they are never out there hating on somebody. 
The Amen. people, the 100%. people, the people Amen. out there who are hating on somebody, they're not happy with themselves. They're not happy with their life. hundred percent. Right. So if I know somebody's out there hating on me and I get affected by what they say about me, then what does that say about my, about my, my mental, my mental capacity, what I've got going on in my life. We know he, cause I'll tell you what, I'm successful. I, I want everybody to eat good. Right. I have never been at home like. Yeah, fuck that motherfucker! I, fuck that! You don't you don't like Seth Rollins? Fuck Seth Rollins! Right? Seth, no. when you with had the Xbox sponsor, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm out there fighting. Did I get a check from Xbox? No, you ain't get no check. No fucking Xbox. But hey, so for me, when I see people fighting yeah. over like oh da 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 da, like it's not it's, it's not just not it. worth it. See what the problem is? Bear just started doing boxing, right? Mm. So he so he's getting good. His hands getting good. Uh-huh. And he's waiting for somebody to mouth off. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, what? Do, I mean, I, I do feel like I want to fight someone, but only at nighttime when I got Rampage and coaching here telling me, you're looking good. Then yeah. I'm like, all right, let's go in the street. Let's go get someone. <laughs> Why in the street? Like, I was like, let's go get someone. <laughs> I told Rampage the other night, let's go to a bar. Let's go get someone. He's like, what's wrong with you? I'm, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Well, we, just, we just get somebody in the ring and just let you spar. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Luke Rockhold came to spar me yesterday. I saw and, that. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yo, Luke, I just started. And yeah. he, he hit me and I go, oh man, boxing hurts. Yeah. And then I got hit again. I'm like, yo, chill. Let me like, let me get ready. Let yeah, me yeah. get set. Yeah. And then within six seconds, I got hit like 10 more times. Yeah. yeah. I got to chill for the rest of the day. My head was spinning. He's so good. Yeah. I couldn't get yeah, yeah, you need somebody on, You need somebody on his level. Yeah, somebody you need somebody on level. You my level? No, 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 no. no, no, no. You need somebody that's that, 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 that an a, MMA uh, fighter. I'm a boxer. No, that's totally fucking different. <laughs> that, no. is, that is a world-class athlete that you're trying to spar right there. All right. Um, I think you get yourself in a controlled environment yeah. where you spar somebody who's out there and you take classes and like, hey, let's just play a little bit and then just get it that feeling fun. going back and forth. It is fun. Training, I will say this for all jokes aside, ever since we started doing the podcast, because I've been friends with Rampage for 10 years and mm-hmm. half of these guys uh, in, in the MMA combat sports world, you know, from getting my my blue belt with BJ Penn and mm-hmm. Pat Tenori and mm-hmm. Bouchesha and all those mm-hmm. guys, Alan Goes at Ruka to training with this guy and his coach. I love combat sports. Yeah. I will say that. Mentally, I've never been more sharp. I've never been more focused. I've never, it's the best shape of my life. Like combat sports does something to you when you train that that sweat is different from cardio. That sweat oh. is different from weights. Like you feel mentally aligned. I think it's anybody who's going through something in their life should go to a boxing gym or a jujitsu studio or some sort of, you know, MMA class and kind of like see what that feels like. Cause I feel like you get better sleep. Yeah. You feel good. I'm not saying to go spar and go fight in the street, but there is something about that. Speaking of, Training. Why is it that when you went to one, you went to one thirty-five? Why is it that you moved up a division? So one of the things I love about what one championship does is that you cannot cut weight. Excuse me. You can cut weight, but you have to weigh in hydrated. Mm. So when I fought in the UFC, when I was making one twenty-five, I was dehydrated and pissing hot yellow Mountain Dew, right? So I was dehydrated. But in one championship, I could have gone to one twenty-five and try to make that, but I can't make 125 hydrated. So that's why I went up to 135 and fought there. Basically, 135 is their 125 division, but you're just, everybody's hydrated. And what, do you I, mean, what do you mean hydrated? How do they know if you're hydrated? So what they do is they test the gravity in the the gravity in your urine. So it's, I know they people- use science? No, I'm not. <laughs> so it's a ref, refract. Ometer, I believe it's called. I could be wrong. They stick something up your pee hole? No, God, no, because I wouldn't be doing that. Oh, that would hurt. So, so basically how they do it is... Um, I don't like that feeling. Yeah. Oh, hell no. So, so, I've had it done once. Uh, why? In, in, in the UK, when I was... Um, uh, I had to take a um, test for, for fighting. When I was... I think I was fighting in the UFC. <laughs> I, had to take a, I had to take a test. And it was a blood test and stuff like. But for some reason, they wanted to uh, do like a STD test. Oh. Like, like Dana White thought I was like nasty okay. or something. Did they hear all I your things? Like, oh, that man's got his BBC. No, we want to make sure to this story. Yeah, yeah. I'm you sorry, you asked. You be doing some crazy. No, story. you no, you asked. They stuck the long Q. I'm telling yeah. everybody, they stuck the long Q tip down my pee hole. Yeah. Who did you show up with that they had to test you for STDs? I don't know, man. I passed. I passed. Continue. All right, my bad. So no, no, no. So. So how they do it, just for layman's term, is that when you go there and you're about to fight, before pre-COVID, they would make you weigh in two times because they wanted the athletes to fight closer to their natural weight. Because you see it all the time. It's like, I'm using my good buddy, uh, Alger McSterling. He walks around like 170, 175. He cuts to 135. He's a big band of weight. But he couldn't do that and be hydrated. He has to basically, you know, be dehydrated to do it. It's, a, it's not very healthy. So what one championship does is that you show up, um, they check your weight like every, everybody else does. And then on, let's say you fight Saturday, you would weigh in Thursday, test your hydration, 
weigh in Friday, test your hydration and weight on both days. Then you would wow. fight Saturday. So there's no way if you if I'm 135 for Thursday, 135 for Friday, by the time you fight Saturday, you're not going to be able to put all back, back that weight on, especially if you're hydrated. Right, it's when you're dehydrated. You eat, you drink all the Pedialyte. You drink all the, you eat all the food. You blow all the way back up. But if your body's hydrated, it's not suffering. It's not wow. losing its minerals and vitamins. You're gonna be fighting more at your your natural weight. So it's healthier for the athletes. But then you do see the athletes where there's, you know, guys do their, you know, they're like, oh, I'm gonna train, hold my, you know, my uh, good urine, my hydrated urine in my bladder piss it out it's it's hydrated then i go blow back up so there's there's ways around yeah, a loophole sure. i mean bullies. so wake up bullies yeah so for me that's why now like when i do jiu-jitsu it's like i'm never cutting weight again like yeah. so when i compete it's 154 even though i weigh 148 they're like why don't you cut the 141 i'm like i'm not i'm done I, pff, no but I, are you not you're not done fighting though you still no 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 yeah. i'm just the door is open right like right now i'm focused on the wife the kids like there's no there's no amount of money right now or no fight out there that interests me that's going to take me away from my kids. Because every single day, picking the kids up from school, I'm at their jiu-jitsu class. I'm helping them out in their classes. I can train jiu-jitsu at a high level and still be there to pick my kids up. I can't train mixed martial arts at a high level and be there to pick my kids right. up. Mm. Right? And so I've, I've, I've done that for 18 years. Now it's time for me to focus on being a father. But I'm always leaving the door open to see what happens. Right. Right. In terms of one, like you, you fought in one and you fought in UFC, both at the highest level, mm -hmm. you know, um, would you say that the one competition is is as equal or to more than UFC? You see, I, I don't I don't like to put brands on athletes. Why is that? Because it's it's not the brand that it's not the brand that houses the athlete. It's more on the line of like I think of us as horses. Okay. Right. And the horse can go to any organization. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at me, I'm a good athlete. I think one championship has amazing athletes. I think UFC has amazing athletes. If I had to compare the two, I fought way more mixed martial. I fought way more athletes in the UFC than I did with one championship. But I will tell you the two significant difference I notice about fighting yeah. athletes is one, I feel like the, the athletes I fight over in one championship, they are more uh, martial arts based. What do I mean by that? You're fighting a guy like Tatsumi Tiwada, Yuya Wakamatsu, um, Danny King Dad, uh, Adrian Marias, uh, Ratang. Those are all the, I think those are all the athletes I fought in one championship. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to, so the difference with those guys, Tatsumi Tawada, uh, Yuya Wakamatsu, they're both Japanese. I'm sure that they grew up doing some type of form of Taekwondo or martial arts, right? You look at Adrian Marias, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu background. He grew up doing that and maybe playing soccer because he's Brazilian. I'm, yeah. I, this is me going on a limb yeah, being. Yeah, yeah. So th uh, then you have Ratang. He grew up doing Muay Thai yeah. and, and he plays soccer. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the other athlete. I forget the gentleman's name. Who? All right, five, oh, Danny King Dad grew up playing yeah. Wushu. Now, if I look at Joseph Benavides, uh, Kyojo Horiguchi, Japanese athlete, so the grew up UFC doing Taekwondo, guys. the UFC guys, they are more athletic based. Where they, I grew up playing basketball, football, uh, track, cross country, wrestling. I didn't jump into a base of martial arts when I was a kid. So I feel like I'm fighting more athletes when I was in the mix in UFC yeah. than when I'm over there. I'm fighting traditional base martial artists, I feel like. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, in terms of, one though i feel like you're in a you're kind of like in this elite group because one's mm -hmm. kind of like this like feeling of pride and dream mm -hmm, and all it kind of gives mm -hmm. you that look but you know dan henderson um fedor these guys all have grand prix belts yep. these, these guys all have belts with multiple fights in a night or multiple fights oh, in a yeah. weekend and you got one yep how does it feel to be like in that elite group oh it's amazing it's absolutely amazing i mean back in that day in the pride those guys were fucking monsters i mean fighting twice in a night i remember watching crow cop fight uh he fought Brandon Lee Silva and mm -hmm. they came back around and fought Josh Barnett and then won that Grand Prix. So I'm grateful. That was always one of the things I wanted to have on my bucket list is to win a World Grand Prix. And now that I've got that, um, it's it's absolutely amazing. You had to fight twice in one night, only in one? No, I don't think I could have done it. I would, I'll, I'll like I hear it back in the day they were on drugs and shit. It's like, all right. I, that's what I heard. I, I'm not saying they were, but I'm sure. It's, I'm, listen, I'm sure some of them were in Pride. Yeah. Because I remember my first time fighting in Pride, they had on the rules. On in the meeting on the paper, they do not test for anabolical steroids, mm -hmm. and I never heard that word anabolical before. I heard of steroids, but yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know, and uh, some of those guys was doing it. Yeah, I fought two times in one night. The, the time I fought um, Benelay and Chuck, 
Yeah. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. Oh, yeah, dude, yeah. The emotions and, I mean, just the amount of, like, going... Because it wasn't like you were going out there like, okay, we're sparring. You're, you're out there and you're fighting. And then you get turned around and do it again. I'm yeah. like, I couldn't I couldn't do it. It was strange, though. The uh, second time when I, when I came out to um, fight Vanille, I wasn't even nervous because I had our, my drilling... It was already gone. It was already gone. Mm-hmm. I had already, you know... Fault, not it was. It was weird. I was a little sore. I was like, "How am I going to do this?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got there like, "Red Page yeah. <laughs> Jackson." You're like, "Here we go. We have yeah. to get this money. Was, Here we it go." It was four to five minutes before, and you know, in the fight, you don't really feel all that stuff. But after the fight, is when oh, you feel it. Yeah. So yeah. four to five minutes, you like you cool down and stuff like that. It, it's, that that's what I mean. I just don't think I could do it. No. Like I could. You I could, could though. You could. <laughs> You got a strong man. I, I think. I think, I, think could. I could, but I would have to go to a very, very dark place. Like <laughs> e- e- even when I did the jujitsu tournament, yeah. it was like six minutes, eight minute break, six minutes, uh, eight minute break, six minutes, thirty minute break, six minutes, five minute break, six minutes, five minutes, six minutes, two, and then I was like, I got done. I was like, I am fucking exhausted. How many matches in the jujitsu tournament? I think it was six matches. Oh damn, six matches. That's but and, and then the hardest thing, and that's why I loved it, because it, it brought a different. Uh, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Excuse me, then. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, well, fuck you, then. Well, fuck you, then. <laughs> um, Ramp- Rampage trying to give a DJ a little, a little energy right yeah, now. He said, no, no, no. Six matches in one day? So for me, it was like the amount of work I got, the amount of uh, different games I had yeah. to figure out when I was going. And it's a point-based system. So mm-hmm. if a guy takes me down, that's two points. If he passes my guard, that's three points. Now I'm down five points. Now I have to get back up and get him. So it's it's very stressful, but that's what yeah. I love about the IBJJF rule set of yeah. grappling. I looked up the the videos. I don't. I didn't see one video where like someone scored a point on you. I don't think they did. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I I'm watching because you know the point system. It's like his back has to hit the ground in a way. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like watching. I'm like I don't think anybody's scoring any points on this guy. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't keeping track, but then my my uh, agent he texts me in Jujutsu, but he goes. Good for you, mate. No one fucking person scored a point on you. And I was like, oh shit, really? He goes, yeah, no one scored a point. And I was like, I mean, I think some people got advantages, yeah. which just means they're 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 trying to progress, but like not one point got scored. But hey, I train hard and it's a test to my teammates back at Grapple Club, Professor Yan. I mean, he's I mean, yeah. he's pushing me. I'm working on my judo right now because a lot of people in jiu-jitsu, they just pull guard. They pull guard. I'm like, nah, like you're negating half of the game. Like you need, I need, I want my judo good because if I can't do a wrestling takedown, I don't want to pull guard and you're a good guard passer. I want to make sure my game is solid. So I've been working on my judo right so, now. And you went in the tournament brown, uh, at brown belt? Brown belt masters, yeah. Are you a brown belt? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm a brown belt, uh, two stripes, second degree brown belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And you're going to go for your black belt? Yes, sir. When? Whenever my professor believes I'm ready for it. You don't think you're ready for it, bro? You're one of the greatest ever. Do so it. it's different. Tell the professor to give you your belt now. So, so this is this is my stipulation. When I am handed my black belt, I want it to be, if me and Rampage with a grapple and the gi, like I want him like, oh my God, like you are legit black belt. Like I don't want to just hand it to me because all the stuff I've accomplished. I want to make sure like, do I know my Deli Hiva? Do I know my Berlin Berlo? Do I know my clock choke? Do I know the lapel? Do I know my squid? Do I know my worm guard? I want to make sure I have the actual curriculum because if I go, but then there's a, every professor is different. Everybody's journey in jujitsu is totally different because if you go to somebody who is a black belt in Brazilian jujitsu and I ask him, if I was to ask, I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to throw this man on the on the dirt, but I'm just going to be, go, go ahead, go ahead, I'll be transparent. It. If go I was to ask Kevin Gaston, he just got his black belt. He just fought in the last UFC. He got submitted by Sean Brady. He just got his black belt. I'm not going to uh, question his professor whatsoever. If his professor believes he's a black belt, he's a black belt. But if I was to go to him like, hey, can you show me squid guard? And he goes, I don't know what the fuck that is. If I can say, hey, can you show me, uh, you know, K card to take the back and then maybe do a Berlin Bolo and all that stuff. He would, and I, when I get my black belt, I probably won't know what that is either. I do know what it is, but I want to make sure when I get that, that black belt, it's a huge honor for me that I want to make sure I am a legit black belt. Wow. Yeah. And then I'm going to start, then, then, then I'm going to start competing as a black belt because I want to see what that level is. I want to see, that's what like, like for me, another thing that gets me hard. It's like when I see a black belt coming in the gym, I'm like, okay, it's go time. I want to see what the difference is between my belt and your belt. My you knowledge, roll, your knowledge. Do you roll with black belts now? Mm-hmm. And you do pretty well against it? So there's only one black belt that's in the gym. That's Professor Yon. It, 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 it's fucking mass murder. <laughs> he knows so much. But that's what gets me like, yeah. 
my brain gets going and it's become a passion of mine. Yeah, I've always got intimidated a little bit when I roll with black belts, you know, because yeah. I'm only a blue belt. I'm, yep. I, I, I tested for a blue belt on a Fabiano Iha mm -hmm. years ago when I first started um, fighting out here and stuff like that. I was thinking like, should I keep going and try to get a black belt? But I, I, I never, I never kept going. You still can now. Yeah. I mean, there's you some. You think so? Absolutely. I'm not, not? Too old. I'm 45. I'm so? not too old. I'm you not too old. Crush. You, you then fine. you go to one, you get a couple hundred grand to go fight. <laughs> <laughs> a couple yeah. hundred. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. You, lo you lost me at a couple hundred grand. <laughs> <laughs> get a couple hundred grand to go fight. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, see, the beautiful thing about jujitsu is that you're not taking any shots to the head. Like the last time I got punched in the face was when I was training for my last fight, which was in May, and. I haven't missed it, not one bit, but I've been yeah. mentally challenging my mind and still, you know, you I took my shirt off. I'm like, damn, how are you still in shape? I was like, cause I'm still training, but I'm just not getting punched in the face. I'm not getting kicked in the liver. I'm not block, taking, I'm not taking any shots. I'm just focusing on my gi and gi and jujitsu. Do you got to run and stuff for jujitsu tournaments? No, no, not at all. See, I haven't like, when I get ready for my next tournament, I'm going to do like a legit, like, okay, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to try to get my body like, in tip top shape, like a training camp essentially. But we'll see. You know, we got three kids married and you got podcasts and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, there's only so much time in a day that you can do all that stuff. Yeah, what's the name of your podcast? It's called the Mighty Cast. The Mighty Cast. So good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Is it is it on YouTube or where, where it's on it? YouTube, Spotify, and Apple. You already on Spotify? Yeah, you guys on Spotify too. Yeah. yeah. You just went to. Oh, wait, wait, tell me, tell me. We're not we're exclusively on YouTube though. So yeah. you guys must got a YouTube people contract. Got, yeah, pe people gotta watch it. Uh -huh. We don't we don't we don't have Spotify, we don't have iTunes yet. We could easily put it on there, but yep. right now, since we're mainly video, until we start doing in the phone in guests and the videos, I really want people to watch the content mm -hmm. and not listen to it yep. because uh -huh. we're having such big legends in here. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. when when we go to Spotify, we just gotta listen to you. We can't watch you on Spotify. You you uh, you can watch on Spotify, I believe because Joe, Joe Rogan, Rogan's you can. Joe yeah. Rogan's you can, yeah. But for ours, it's mostly YouTube. Yeah. That's where we get most of our views, our viewership. And then we also have the Spotify as well. Um it just gives people another option to be able to listen to the mm -hmm. podcast. But me and my producer Michael, um we have a great team. Me, Michael, Med, uh Nick, I believe his name is, mm. you know, we have a, a solid yeah. team. I catch I catch yours on um on Instagram, I haven't seen it on TikTok yet. I gotta follow you on TikTok so I yeah. can see. Yeah, we got like, some. We got some clips on TikTok. It, it's TikTok's a whole other fucking yeah, yeah, game. Yeah, TikTok's month. crazy now for sports because there's so many sport clips going up, but then it's people <laughs> reviewing sports clips. I've seen you review and look at people's yep. content. I actually want to know what's your opinion on uh, on on Mr. Cobra Andrew Tate over here. I think he's I've great. You so review his kickboxing. You know, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, you know, be honest. I, I yeah, I think when I first heard about Andrew Tate was when he got locked up. That's the first one you heard about it? That's the first time. I've heard, you know. You was late. Think <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> he's, he's like, you were late, I'm a, I'm a fan of Andrew Tate. Yeah, yeah. So I, I didn't know anything about him, right? Because everybody's like, oh, man, what do you think about Andrew Tate? And I'm like, who's Andrew Tate? And they're like, what? I'm being <laughs> he was, honest. He was the most, most famous viral guy on, man yeah, on the planet. Yeah, on the planet. The most famous guy on the internet. I, you know, him and his brother. You, you know what they say to Jackie Chan? They're like, Jackie Chan, what do you think of the 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 Kardashians? He goes, who? Yeah. <laughs> Who's the Kardashians? I don't know, right? So uh, first time I got introduced to Andrew Tate was something like, hey, what do you guys think? He said, Dimitri, what do you think about the Andrew Tate situation? I was like, who's this? They sent me the clip on um, YouTube and they, this gentleman, he's like, oh, you motherfuckers, that, that, that. you fucking, he's just very high masculinity, right? And then he gets rated they come take all his shit. And I'm like, guys, like FBI and people just don't show up your house for no goddamn reason. They just don't do that. They just, so obviously this man's doing something. Then have the man locked up for so that's many not days. Always, that's not always true. Bro. Well, I, I know, but that's how I felt. Yeah, that's right? how you felt, yeah, yeah. Right, like if, if, if they came in here. In Romania though. Yeah. This is, this is not in the US. This yeah. is like in Romania. So yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. right? So, so you, I, I, listen, honestly, I agree with what he said 100%. Yes, things happen. Like people can lie on you. Somebody can, somebody can, somebody can lie on, on Mighty Mouse tomorrow. Say when he was in Orange yeah. County. Yeah, he, he did X, Y, and Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, but then I'll go to, I'll do my trial and then everything right, else, all, right. he was scot-free. But I'm right. saying like, if, if fucking FBI and CIA came in here and raided this motherfucker right now. I'm running. No, I'm, I'm, I'm like, hey, hands up. They're like, well, how do you know Barry Jackson? And the next thing he goes, Timmy John, did you know Barry Jackson was uh, X, Y, and Z? He's on the most, I, I don't fucking know. So right. I was saying that you make you start assuming. So I assumed that this guy was no good. Oh, I'm okay, like, okay, okay, what's okay. going on? And I said, guys, people don't show up to your house just to fucking, you know, raid you. So then he did his his uh his time, comes out, they have nothing on him. And I'm like, okay, so 
this guy must be innocent. And I started listening to more of him, more of him. And I was like, what are you saying? He's kind of fucking like, I, I believe in like whatever you're trying to push out there. Then I started watching his um, kickboxer stuff. And I was like, yeah, he's pretty legit. And then the, the, the community wanted me to break down more and more and more. And I'm like, yeah, he's, he's fucking legit. Like granted, when he's fighting smaller people, he gets away with it. But when he's fighting guys who are a lot taller than him, it's a, he has a harder time. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to agitate him. And you think he's good? Oh yeah, he's good. A kickboxer? Kickboxing, one thousand. He was doing PKA though, right? Not, not Muay Thai, one. No, doing... no, no, PKA, not not Muay Thai. No, no, no. He was doing PKA, right? Yeah. Well, PK, what's PKA? Oh, uh, it's like the first kickboxing in America, like where they wear the pants, they can only kick above the waist. No, he was doing legit, like. Oh, he's doing Muay Thai. Oh, I didn't. No, know no, that. no, not Muay Thai. Legit kickboxing. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm confused now. So, well, it was kickboxing, but not to the legs. So this is no, no. So this is the hardest scene, like, and this is the thing I have a hard time when it comes to like one championship as well in kickboxing. So when it was back in K1 days, you could clinch. This is a very beginning from my infancy, from what I've heard. You can clinch, but then people would just come over and get clinched and get, get fucked up in the clinch and they couldn't get out. So then uh, K1 made a rule that you only can clinch for three seconds, so you have to let go. And you can still throw knees, but no elbows. Excuse me. So in Muay Thai, you can throw elbows. But in karate, uh, excuse me, in kickboxing, where Andrew Tate has done, he's done knees. You can come in and throw a knee, but you can't clinch a knee. But knee. can he kick to the leg? And yeah, he's sport? kicking everywhere. Yeah. He's kicking the head, yeah. legs. Oh, everything. okay. Yeah. I, I must only saw some old clips. But what I was going to say about Andrew Tate is that I agree with a lot of stuff he says. I just, I just didn't a hundred percent agree with his delivery because, uh, because, no. because you know, if you you have daughters, yeah, all right. So you, I have, I have a daughter, and I have sisters, and if you live. Around women, you know, women, it's like, it's all about some things that, how you say it, right? Yeah. And I think that was a problem with, with Andrew Tate. He was, the truth hurts, and he was saying a lot of truths, and, but then it was how he, how he was saying how he was calling a lot of women bitches and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> bro, That's a no-go. Bro, bro. That's a no-go. Yeah, but yeah. I, 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 I talk like that, you know, because where I'm from is my culture, a woman yeah. is a bitch and a man's a nigga. Yeah. That's the slang. Yeah. So, I, so I understand it, but it was like how he was saying it. Yeah. And I could see how people would get upset with him. Yeah. And that's, that's what, that was my whole thing. Like, if you're saying the truth like that and you're talking the truth and you and you speaking like like stuff that's kind of like facts that, that a lot of men can relate to. Yeah. Just just leave the leave the, the bits and stuff out that where women can really get it's upset. E it's more and, digestible, yeah. 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 So cause they're gonna cause they're gonna they're gonna bypass the learning process and be upset with you. Yeah, they're just gonna stick to that 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 negative connotation you said. They're gonna they're gonna miss the whole delivery and message she's yeah. trying to yeah. get that's out where there. It went south. Yeah, that's where you go south and it's like ah if you would have delivered it better, then I think People will be more kind to listen to his content. And I mean, he has a huge fan base and following, especially after the Romania thing when they locked him up. I was like, how can they just, you know, go and lock this man up for 45 days, 60 days, yeah. and then there's no Judas? It's like he's just yeah. loses 60 days of his life, take all his, sh his shit, right? So it's a, yeah, who knows? It, it could it, all have been an act too. In terms of like you and, and <laughs> yeah. that, that's like, <laughs> never know. A lot of people <laughs> yeah. say, all right, maybe that was his like second win for kind of going viral. I don't yeah. know. Regardless, I think a lot of his messaging is is great. And then a lot of the messaging is like, bro, you can't just make fun of women like that. You're going to get destroyed. And it doesn't make any sense to do that anymore. Yeah. My sisters would kill me. I have a sister who's an attorney. If she found out I was talking like that, she would yeah. sue me. So <laughs> one, one of the things is like you have, you know, Rogan says you're the GOAT. You know, Masvidal said you have some of the best, you know, double leg and takedown. You know, you have Chael saying all your moves out of, out of a video game. You have GSP saying you're one of the best ever. Like, everybody in MMA, you're like their favorite fighter. You're everybody's favorite fighter's favorite fighter, yeah. right? And you're considered one of the top, if not the best ever. You know, with your 11-time consecutive title defenses and, and wins and the way you operated as a fighter, then you go to one and you do it again just to show anybody, everybody, you could do it everywhere you go. Do you feel that you get the love from UFC as an organization? Do you feel like UFC tried to maybe wipe away you as no. as the goat? Do you do you feel that love though still from the community? No, from the community. Yeah. Uh, well, who's the community? Like the MMA community. Oh yeah, I yeah. think they still love me. I I, yeah. I I think so. You know, obviously, I'm I'm very grateful that a lot of the my peers uh, believe in my skill set and how I carried my career and. You know, I think the community still loves loves me and my brand, and yeah, I, I'm just grateful. I, I, it, it's a it's an interesting thing because when you ask that question, I'm like, when you say community, I think the community still loves me, but when I think about the brand or the organization of the UFC at the time, it just wasn't what I think the company was excited about 
at that time, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. Like, if you switch it, if you put me, if you put my reign now in 2023, it'll just be, you know, yeah. skyrocketed through the roof, I feel like. What about this loaded 125 division we see now in the UFC? You have FOMO? You feel like you want to get back? Oh, God, no. No, 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 no. That's the one thing that, one of the things I've always, uh, and I'll answer that question. I'll talk about those yeah. athletes too. One of the things that I grew up watching is um, Ivan Salivary, one of my coaches, uh, helped him through his career. And he said that he would love their drilling and he would get from going out there fighting. He would love the attention. He would love all that, those bright lights. And for me, when I heard that, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to fall in love with that. Mm. Like, I will go out there and I fight. remember him. Yeah, I, yeah, he was a bad. He, he was, was a bad, bad ass, yeah. yeah. But I will, go home, I will go and fight. And I thought I would fight when, you know, knock a guy out. Submission of the night, 50K, get my check. Then Sunday morning, I'm back home, pressure washing the fence doing my duties as a father and a husband. So I never fell in love with that lifestyle. So for me, when I see these guys, they're getting their opportunity, like, you know, Alex Pantoja and Brandon, Brandon are about to fight. I'm super happy for those guys. They deserve every bit of it. I hope they make a lot of money. Um, you have Brandon Moreno, who's about to take on another gentleman, I don't know his name. Um, so that division is thriving and they're making good money and I'm happy for them. Would you be happy to, uh, to be in uh, UFC Hall of Fame? I wouldn't mind it. I, I think I think um, I heard your your uh, <laughs> your your my take on see, it. See, I, I think this is my take on it. Like, I think I think you deserve to be in the UFC Hall of Fame for what you've been able to do. I believe you uh, unionized two of the belts. You did that, right? Right. Yeah. Um, and that's a big thing in history of, of my history and mixed martial arts and me growing up and watching it. Right. So, I think you deserve a being there, and I can understand. Your I don't want to call it saltiness, but I can understand your your like. It's it's honestly it's not that I'm salty. Uh, first of so all, I, I shouldn't use the word yeah, salty. No, I understand, yeah, yeah, yeah. understand yeah, what you yeah. say. I, I understand what you say. It, I I can be salty at sometimes because like things like the whole Reebok thing. I'm going yeah. to brought Reebok over and they screwed me over. Then so I left and then they try and paint me as that I retired, but I went yeah. I went to Bellator. But it, it's it's things like um honestly. Like like your accomplishments in, in, in the UFC, like you said, you defended the belt like eleven times, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, you deserve to be in there. But me, I I I, I beat Chuck. Yep. Then I, I, I unified the belts mm -hmm. and then I lost the forest. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I and then after I lost the forest, I was, you know, winning and losing fights. Is that a Hall of Fame? No, not really. You know what I'm saying? I did one thing really good is yeah. that I, I I unified the belts. Like, people was really upset that I beat Chuck. Yeah. You know, I, this is my first time ever getting booed before in my life. <laughs> it's a big life. Yeah. yeah. I've never, I never been booed before in my life. Yeah, yeah, until, yeah. Until, I, th I don't think I've been booed anymore since. But I, mean, I, I don't know, but you're just as love, too. I'm not even saying that because you're right here, but Rampage Yeah, no, you're just love, like I said, yeah. in my history of growing up, right, you are, were a big part of me watching mixed martial arts, right? Like, a lot of people don't know my background. Like, I was working full-time watching this motherfucker fight. Same same as Joseph Benavides, same as Domino Cruz, Uriah Faber. I was working full-time. Like, I was the guy at home, like, put it in the box. We gotta get home, catch WEC. Oh, we gotta get home, catch Red Page and uh, chuck it up. Like, I was that guy. So, if people ask me, like, oh, who'd you grow up watching? Rampage Jackson was one of those guys. I remember when That's you unified the belt, right? right so yeah. when they're like, oh, man, do you think, you know, Rampage Jackson should be in the Hall of Fame? And that's the thing that sucked about the UFC Hall of Fame. It should be, like Er Hawani said, it should be a mixed martial arts Hall of Fame of all the athletes who've done amazing things in mixed martial arts. If like, Pride had Pri a Pri Hall of Fame, I'd be happy. It, I, yeah. it, it, exactly, because you've done so much stuff. So I, so my vision of you isn't just your UFC career. It's what you've done in Pride. Yeah. And also the UFC and what you brought in Bellator and if you continue to box, right? So right, right. that's my heart. Of but when do, I, do you, I but do you think people in the Hall of Fame should get like a um, pension or something? See, this is the thing when it comes to mixed martial arts, right? I'm always for the fighter, right? A fighter and an athlete. Like if my kids, I hate that. You think I should be a professional fighter? I'm like, absolutely not. I'm like, why not? Well, you were, and I was like, yes, because I was good at it. And I became sick. I, 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 <laughs> hold on, hold on. You're just going to tell your kid you're not good. Right now, yeah, I'm going to tell him because you know how it is. Yeah. You know, how how many times are you how many times you got in that damn office? Hey, Danny, how's it going? Hey, I think I deserve this. No, Rampage, we're not going to give you that. No, we're, yeah. no, we're going to. How many times? I don't want my kids to go through that. Yeah. I don't want them showing up to a fight and making five and five. I don't want them like, you know, you make, you know how it is, right? Yeah, but they're your kid. They're going to, they're going to, because they're your kid, they're going to make more. No, I, I want them. So? I want my kids to go to college. I want my kids to do what they love. Follow the passion. 
I want him to get a good education. My older son, he I want him to be a pilot. He loves planes. He's a very uh, plane enthusiast. Uh, my daughter, she's musically inclined. Um, so I think I'm going to push her into that direction. Like just, we have a piano at the house, a little dinky ass piano off Amazon. Mm -hmm. She was at home playing the repeater, uh, the recorder. Mm -hmm. um, my middle son, um, he, he loves soccer. So I want to push them into their passions. I don't want to be like, hey, I was the best in the world. Right. Y'all need the best in the world. Like I'm not doing that shit right. because I fought mm -hmm. so you guys don't have to fight, right? right? But back to the thing about the pension is it's very hard because when I look it's it's very hard because I think, man, it's it's that's a hard situation yeah. to talk about because yeah. I think I think the fighters need to have a governor body. Like I think they need a union. Reason why is because when you look at the numbers and you see how much, let's just say the UFC, right? Because they're their most profitable sport property of mixed martial arts right now. How much they make? If you paid every single fighter two million dollars, how many people are on the roster? Let's just say a million dollars, four hundred fifty. Athletes, so you give them a five hundred million dollar check. You allo allocate five hundred million dollars just to the athletes a year, right? Everybody's getting a million dollars, but then how can you say this person deserves this much? It's just like NFL, right? Like mm -hmm. I had a buddy of mine who, when we used to train together, he was in NFL. He goes, "Man, I make a six k a month, just six k a week, just sit on a practice squad and just give my because they have a union mm -hmm. where he's like, you know." But then they try to be sneaky; they cut him right before he was gonna get that pension. They're like, "Oh, he's about, he's up for that pension." Cut him. He gets nothing, right? So for me, when I started fighting, Matt was always saying, you're going to save your money. Save your money. Save your money. Save your money. Start investing your money. That way, you don't have to worry about a pension because they're never going to... Yeah. It ain't never going to happen because yeah. as athletes, we are designed to hate each other. What do I mean by that? Not hate, but like if Jackson... If, not Jackson. If Rainbase gets a sponsorship at the time, like, man, why did I get that sponsorship? I, they should be sponsoring me. I want that money that Rampage that's, got. That's how I felt when he had the Xbox. So exactly. Was, you see that? You see the hate already? Yeah, yeah. I mean, now, right. now, now, now that I tell him that I have, I wasn't making money, he goes, okay, all right. I, I'm glad I didn't get that sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's, yeah. that's that's the culture that we were bred up to, yeah. right? Where now I've, I've dubbed my hands in different things. Where you look at the actor strike in Hollywood, mm -hmm. every single actor was behind each other. Every single Pretty actor. Amazing. It's amazing. And they shut down. Yeah. They literally shut down Hollywood. MMA wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. But could you imagine? Could you imagine? This is the power that this is how I am as an, a, 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 an athlete, uh, entrepreneur, whatever you want to call me. If every athlete in the world of mixed martial arts and everybody in the UFC, PFO, whatever it may be, if we all say, guys, we're not fighting, right? Yes, the organization go out there and get another guy who's going to fight for cheaper. There, there, there's always going to be that. But if you take John Jones, Izzy Adesanya, Francis Nagano, Kamar Usman, Habib Nurmagomedov, uh, myself, Islam Makhachev, you take Volkanovski and all those guys, like, guys, we're not fucking fighting. Like, we're not fighting anymore. Here's the kicker. Ain't nobody got enough money to outlast them, right? So that's what's so powerful about the, the, the actors because they're like, even though you have uh, Chris Pratt, which is one of the biggest actors right now, he's doing Garfield, he just did Mario Brothers. He was supporting the D-listers, the F-listers, who aren't even in the big movies. They're all coming together to support each other. So that's like Israel Adesanya coming to support a guy who just got in the UFC who's own one, right? right? If that happens, the organizations have no choice but to come to the table and create a bargaining agreement because guess what? ESPN, they're going to be like, hey, we need our fucking Settle content. We, we need our content. So whatever, we paid you to provide us content X, Y, and Z. You better get this shit to go because yeah, that's that's yeah. that. What, that's when I started studying Hollywood, how they that came together. And I have a couple buddies who act. They're like, dude, like I can't go do anything. I have to, you know, the, the SAG... After it's going to take care of me, but we're all together. We're all one. We're in mixed martial arts. We are all not one. Yeah. We are all separate. I mean, it's interesting though because like, so that's why no pinch is ever going to happen until yeah. we all come together and we're like, no, rampage. We need to take care of rampage. Oh, hey, we need to take care of John Jones. Hey, we we need to da da da. However way they figure it out or whatever, it will never happen until this happens. That's why I heard uh, Francis. I heard that's part of the reason why he left the UFC because. He wanted to make some changes for other. Hey, fighters. sweetheart. Oh, we got a special guest real quick. Hey, real quick, come in here, say hi. Oh, no, 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 over here, over here. I haven't seen buddy in a long time. Hey, you're blocking. <laughs> Sit down right here. <laughs> Sit down right here for two seconds. Oh, fuck. Real quick, two seconds. We got Luke Rockle just walked in, a UFC champion. 
another legend. Sit down. It's not your is show that, yet. Is, is that a chair? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I just want him to say something real quick. So we're here interviewing Mighty Mouse, right? One of the greatest the to ever do it, the oh GOAT. We have Rampage Jackson. Oh. And before we uh, before we just throw you in the mix of this, just, we're, just, <laughs> we're just having a full takeover. Uh, I want your opinion as, as a champion who was one of the elite fighters in Strike Force, one of the elite fighters in the UFC, your thoughts and what you think of uh, Mighty Mouse while you guys are here. It's always good to see fighters kind of give flowers and talk about their careers. You know what? I would have I would have walked away and just get on the road and get home like I had to do. But you know, I know my boy Mighty Mouse is in here, one of the very few Crazy ass goats <laughs> of the goats, and uh, I had to come in and interrupt. Say hi, because pay respect to my boy. And that's one thing that I love about this podcast and Rampage. I I appreciate you doing this and kind of bringing the community together because no other podcast in the world can you just have legends and and fighters who have belts and and straps just walk in and and show love. And we've all worked with each other. Yeah. uh, Every single time. How'd you work with him? Shit, we were at a nightclub and my wife was wearing a banging (laughs) ass dress, right? And uh, he, he, he was like, he was like, Yep, yep, you you good one, DJ. You don't let this one go, all right? And I was like, <laughs> her tits were all hanging out. That's before y'all was married? No, we, we were uh, married at the uh, time. Yeah, but your wife is hot. Your wife hot as hell. Hey, DJ knows how to climb the mountain, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's something you said. Yeah, yeah. You can climb it from a young age. <laughs> yeah. She's taller than you. Yeah, she's taller. Yeah, she's 5'5". Five, five. I'm 5'3". Five, so, but yeah, it's, I mean, always been a big, big fan of you, man. The question mark cake. And I was, when you signed that bare knuckle fight, I was like, it's like, why are you turning your best fucking weapon those kicks? But, you know, I'm sure you made a good good bag for that. And you have fun. Yeah, you it was a test, test right? Test of course I fucking watched what it. What do you think about him versus Mike Perry? I was there live. Oh, you were there? <laughs> yes, I was there live. Was Conor McGregor there too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that the fight? Yeah, I was there live and I was just like, fuck, man. I was like... You know, because I, I like my parent. I like uh, Luke Rocco. I've spent more time with Luke Rocco, but I was like, it's going to come down to like, who is going to land that shot? But with Baron Uncle, as you know, it's fucking different. It's different. And then I also said like, it's Luke. A, it's a style, you know, it's like, it's like, it's that fucking just coming forward nasty. You can't be a slick boxer. You got to yeah. fucking get in there. You got to get dirty. Yeah. The guys get their head in there. They get their head out of their face out of the way. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I've noticed. Like, Was yeah, that your first one? My first one. It was yeah. fucking first one. Am I, am I, and I said, Luke, and I'm, this is my pain. I was like, Luke Rockhold's greatest weapon are your fucking kicks. Yeah. Your kicks, your distance, your jujitsu as well. And like, you're like, your fight against uh, Paulo Costa when I started you doing a little more rest. And I was like, okay, here we go. This is what I want to see. I'm like, if Luke goes out there and just fucking measures, crush mark kick, body kick, body kick, and then he shoots you sprawl and you do your jujitsu, I was like, it's, it's a wrap, you know? Yeah. But so I, I'm a big fan of Luke. I, I mean, I follow it. his career. I mean, his I career, it. I mean, I study so mm-hmm. much, but I still. You have another bare knuckle fight coming up? No. Is it announced yet? No. Do you want to talk about it? You got 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 something you want to talk about? (laughs) (laughs) This is the podcast. It's the podcast. I don't know. I I don't have anything scheduled, but you know, there's a couple things that you know that have been thrown out there a couple times. Yeah. (laughs) No, no response. A couple times, no response, but. Machida, I don't know if you're out there, if you're dancing around, there's been a couple offers. But. As in Leota Machida? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all the Machida I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, there's only one fucking Machida I know. Yeah. Does this, oh. does this Machida drink urine? <laughs> Machida, you know, a lot of guys drink urine, you know, from... From the from the, uh, the from the goat of urine drinking, so oh. you know, hey, I don't know, but if the, if he's out there, if he wants to sign a contract, I mean, I wouldn't mind running it back, you know. Hey, I love bare it. knuckle, but bare knuckle, bare knuckle. Wait, 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 Oh, okay. So that's bare knuckle MMA. So that's Wait, that's, that's or uh, MMA. I like I, I think I think bare knuckle even bare knuckle kickboxing because you can judge distance. You can play a distance game like with kicking. Without the kicking aspect, it's just a dirty brawl. It's a, that's it's, a, that's it's, the thing about yeah. it, like it's like there's no understanding of distance and like, anything can land. But, but if it's a fucking fight with kicks, let alone MMA, been grappling, then you can then you really have to be patient about distance. You can't just run forward like I don't know if I could do bare knuckle. I could. I, 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 I don't mind. I don't mind it there. if I can kick because not a lot of people get to my fucking. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, that's Mazadal. Mazadal's got. Mazadal has that. That's his. That's his. So what? What would you do? I got a few offers. I got a few offers. There's one on the table, but you know, it's the opponent's got to be right. Yeah, Cheetah. You know, sounds fun. That would be. I would watch that. I don't oh, like. Yeah, wa- yeah. I don't like watching bare, bare knuckle though because I just. I just. Yeah. F- it, I can't get into it. It depends. Yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, but like a real fight fight. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's she different. Like that, that karate, we both yeah, absolutely. Like, that's how UFC absolutely. used to be. That's how, that's yeah, how back that's, in the day. Yeah, yeah. Day, See, for me, it's all based that's on... I, I like I like bringing it back to something different than I've never done. Because we mm. thought so much in the UFC. So yeah. it's like a different element now at this stage. It's like, it kind of gets me excited. Yeah. It's like bare knuckle boxing was like... It was a dumb element, but I tried it. <laughs> 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 All right, let's move on. Let's yeah, move on yeah. to something like that. Would, would Bert Knuckle MMA get your dick hard in the morning? <laughs> no, it would not. Because I broke my hand multiple times. For a million dollars? <laughs> nah, even that, no. See, see, for me, I think this is two things. One. Two mil? Two mil? <laughs> nine, nine, nine. Yeah, oh, now you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> see, this is one thing I love about seeing, like, the athletes, like Luke Rockhold, followed his career for a very long time. And for me, when it comes to bare knuckle fighting, if I'm a fan of the athlete, which I'm a fan of him, I'm going to watch it. When Eddie and Mike got him up, I watched it, right? Because I'm a fan of both those guys. When Mike fights, I'm going to watch it, right? So when he goes on fight, uh, Machida, if that happens, if, if it's in karate combat, I'm going to watch it. Just like uh, Anthony Pettis versus Ben Henderson. It's crazy. Yeah. And I love what the era we're in right now where we're seeing athletes who are very successful in mixed martial arts who has a, who had big names. They're going off doing what they want to go do. Just how when I said in the beginning of this podcast, what do I want to do, Demetrius? I want to do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So that's the thing I'm starting to see. You're seeing karate combat. You're seeing bare knuckle mixed martial arts. You're seeing bare knuckle fighting. You're seeing a whole slew of things just going on right now. Boxing. And, and boxing, yeah, boxing, France and the Ghana. It's like, Man. I love these athletes being able to take their brand and go, what, what does Luke Rocco want to do? It's not like, Luke mm. Rocco, this is your next fight. Yeah, no, Sign it now. I want something intriguing. You know, it's like, I I, I, I want to box. Yeah. I, wanna do, I didn't really exactly want to do bare knuckle, but you know. I, the money was good. Right? The, the money was good. It, it, yeah. was, it was an interesting presentation. It was Mike Perry. It was, the money was great. And it was something different. Now it's like, all right, at bare knuckle MMA, it's just like, just kind of shutting down boxes. Checking yep. little boxes that you want. Like boxing? Yeah, I want to box, but I want to box the right guy. Too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Same. I ain't, ain't going to box some scrub right now. I I'll box a scrub though. Yeah. <laughs> I want my first. I want my, he's right. Yeah. Yeah. He's about to yeah. go fight Shannon Briggs yeah, yeah. in Saudi Arabia. We, we oh, are you? We are getting really close to getting, uh, that, getting really close to getting see, that sign. I'm gonna Shannon tune Briggs. in because I'm a fan, yeah. right? Like yeah. I don't give a fuck if he's. You, How's you he have gonna five, do? Five, yeah. You should do good. I mean, I remember you guys were fucking around and I saw his right hand. It was still quick, yeah. but you rampage, baby. So yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'll I'm, take his old hey, ass hey, out. Hey, I'm betting on black. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> we, we both, I know. <laughs> hey, you're going to fight a guy. He's still quick, but you're going to do good. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm going off how old he is. I, think. Yeah, yeah. I wanted my first boxing match to be like somebody who I could most definitely knock out. Yeah. You know, being yeah. selfish. Yeah. But him, I don't, think I, I don't think I can most definitely knock him out, but I think his age will catch up to him. Yeah. What about you? You thought about boxing? Talking? We talking like uh, eight rounds, I think. Oh, Six or eight rounds. rounds. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. it. I like it. it. You wouldn't do boxing for a big check? No, I, I think for me as, I don't want to say I'm a, I respect boxing. I respect the art of it. And in order for me to get myself ready for a boxing match, like my body's so in tune. Like when I throw my jab, my right, my right hip is ready to go for a kick or a shot. I just... Yeah, I don't yeah. think I'll be a good boxer. I, I watched this video of you, and basically all these guys <laughs> yeah, are talking about... Yourself. Yeah, he's, I mean, you are one of the goats in the sport, so I think you would do a phenomenal. But I watched this video, and the guy's talking about... Some guy, some random dude, like, from Arkansas in his mom's basement. You know these kids just critique everything. But he had an interesting point that you had, like, some of the most dynamic striking against Henry your first fight. And mm -hmm. then, you know, obviously you destroyed him. And then the second fight, like, you couldn't get your hands going like it seems like something was stopping you or and the second fight gets hit yeah oh what was the reason for that so so when the first fight when i fought the second fight when i fight Henry, when i hit him with that leg kick and he started doing you know stanky leg my mind i was like jump on him but i was like no be patient be patient and then the second round i remember coming back uh after the first round i remember coming back to the corner and i talked to my coach i'm like okay i'm fucking mixing it up because he he had he had my number. He was keeping up with me. And then after that, I was trying to let my hands go. The biggest thing I take away from that fight is that I didn't fight. Like I was being so conservative with the leg kicks yeah. because he wasn't, I couldn't wrestle him. I couldn't get my hands off. So I just kept on kicking his fucking leg over and over and over. And the judges didn't really score the, uh, the leg kicks. So then at the time, that's why they say this is one of the worst calls in UFC history because at the time they just passed that rule i think it was like the abc where it's like if you take somebody down and you hold them you gain no points right because when he took me down he never passed my guard he never mounted me he never got the side control it was took me down hold me in a scorpion for uh, wrestling and then i try to get back up mm -hmm. so they were saying that when he took me down it wasn't really solidified anything right mm -hmm. and so 
But yeah, I mean, I relied on the leg kicks way yeah. too much to let my hands go. Do you think he was the best wrestler you ever fought? Oh yeah, 1,000%. Really? 1,000%. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think him and Dom, Dom was just longer than me. Yeah. So, you know, that motherfucker hold me down and stay, stand on his feet. But as for Henry, his wrestling is probably the best. He was a, he's an Olympic champion, yeah. right? Yeah. He's next level. I mean, you guys hated each other. How did you guys become best friends? How do you become We never hated partners? each other. I don't hate anybody. I would say that. Yeah, and yeah, going, we, we all hate people when they're at the top. And you, like, <laughs> yeah. Remember we hey, talked about we, we all, hate each we other. All, yeah. We all learn to hate each other. Exactly, get, see? There's yeah. one belt, and there's only one of us. Can yeah. 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 But, but yeah, MMA... But we got the best sportsmanship out of any other um, oh, yeah, full contact sure. sport. Yeah, I would for say sure. so too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I and just, then you became best friends in training partners. Yeah. So, um, me and the wife, we got a house out in Arizona, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna. I've never cross trained in my whole entire mixed martial arts career. I was like, you know, I'm gonna uh, reach out to Henry and um, see if I can be willing to come over there and train. And he goes, yeah, sure, why not? And so we started training together, and that's how it happened. He's how a was, good guy. I like yeah, him. How was the training guy. with him? It's great. It's great. We're just two different animals. We're literally two different beasts. Where he's. He's probably the most disciplined, strategic person I've ever trained with. To me, I'm a fucking chaos. Got like, yeah. I'm, I'm just like, yeah. he was like, like I don't forget the second time I fought, fight Adrian, he goes, dude, don't kick him. I was like, why? He was like, because he's going to take you down. I was like, I'm going to fuck, take me down. What are you going to do? Pass my guard? I don't give a shit. I go out there and I go, wham, catches it, takes me down. I come back after the fight. He goes, he took you down. I was like, yeah, but guess what? I kept throwing that fuck kick. And when I showed that kick and he, he, he fucking flinched and I hit him with the right hand, that's why I threw the kick. So where Henry will go out there, uh, Henry's, Henry's like, okay, motherfucker, what you going to do? He's measuring a distance the whole time. I'm like, yeah. fuck that distance, just go. Yeah. So I mean, the first time you fought him, obviously you were fighting for the belt and won. You lost. And then you come back, you dismantle the guy. Was Henry helping you in the first fight too or just the second no, one? No, second fight. Wow. Second fight. And I think, That's the, cool. I think the biggest thing I got from Henry was just a different perspective of like of competing. Because he was like, I'm a fighter, but I'm first, I'm a competitor. Like I compete. Um, and that's what he's saying. Like when I beat you the second time, he goes, I know I didn't really beat you, but I knew if I can show in the judge's eyes that I'm controlling you doing this, I was competing against you. He was you. honest about that? Yeah, we're, we're so honest. And I was like, yeah, I don't care if you won. I mean, I went off, did better things and you you became double champ and I'm happy for you. Yeah, so. It's kind of it's crazy to me. Also, he I have a- three, right? Does he call himself? <laughs> <laughs> he's a triple champ. Triple C, triple C. Triple C, because he got the Olympic. The gold, the yeah, Olympic, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 It's kind of lit though. Yeah. 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 He's, he's one of the most accomplished uh, MMA fighters in the UFC roster for sure. Oh yeah, as, a, as a champion, I mean, yep. to have but those types of belts. He, but he just champion. came back, he, he just came back off a long hiatus uh, and he uh, lost. Yeah, he took three years off and fought Aljo and Aljo beat him. I'm sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. I didn't help him. I trained a little bit, but I'm not the best body type for Aljo. Mm -hmm. But I gave him my my thoughts on it. And like I said, we're just two different animals where, you know, I grapple. Where it's like if somebody shoots, they fell a shot, and you duck your head, I'm taking your back. I'm trying to put my hooks in. I'm looking for a choke to where, you know, when he shot, he was like, get up. <laughs> I'm like, what are you fucking doing? So just two different beasts. Speaking of that. <clears throat> Speaking of accomplished people, this is the most accomplished in person in there. So I want to see some Rampage Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> hey, give me some Rampage Jackson right now. Where? Oh, when he fights, he doesn't fight. Give him oh, a fight. Hey, when he's doing this, he's like, hey, Rampage. Then when he's fighting, he's like this. Boom! <laughs> 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 hey, all right. Give me a little song. Look at me. Give me a little Luke. Show us Luke. Show us Luke. Let's see Luke. Southpaw. Right? Yeah. He, he's here, and then he's like, and he has that, 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 that question mark kick. And then you like to throw that long, that like, boom. Yeah. That long, that boom. Yeah. But see, you're grappling so fucking good. Like. <laughs> Wait, show me the ramp. I don't want to show that. I don't want to see that. I want to see that shit. Uh, no. Now, people make fun of me because I, I hit the pads. I'm close like this. I don't like yeah. the stretch. He's like, he's like, <laughs> you kind of, uh, well, it's like an old, old man boxing, right? Damn! He's like, 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 he's because hey. everybody asked about it. Hey, this this helped me win a lot of fights. I wasn't supposed to win. It helped me win my first K1 fight. Oh. See, he's done K1. I'm just talking about yeah, that's crazy. Come, come real big in I'm not used to yeah, it. There it is. There it is. Throw whatever you want. Throw whatever you want. Are we on camera? Yeah. Throw whatever you want to throw. Open hand. Throw whatever you want to Slap, you gotta slap. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, straight, the straight punch is gonna eat his ass alive. Uh, you gotta yeah. go. I can, yeah. see, I can see a couple of those. Yeah. yeah. Then you come back. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> think of that? Think of my ear. I can, I can cover all straight punches yeah. too, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not really. It's no. not it's, 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 yeah. yeah, but it's not invented for the straight punches. But where yeah. did you learn this? Uh, from Colin Oyama. Oh. And when I, I when I started training with Tito, uh, right after my fight with Sakuraba, um, I started training with Tito Ortiz, mm. and his and his Muay Thai coach was uh, Colin Oyama, mm. and. Um, I'm talking about as soon as my fight was over, we went up to Big Bear. They were training Big Bear, and I and I saw him teaching them, and he was teaching them the cover and roll. And his his uh, he was trained by a Thai uh, a Thai guy, uh, Crew Rex, uh, R.I.P. And he it was designed for the shorter guy to be able to beat the taller guy. Yeah. And and the way he the way he taught it was you can you can do the cover and roll, you get rid of close. Mm -hmm. it, it, it stops it stops everything. It, it's it's the, it's really made for the guy who's trying to tee off on you. Yeah. And then you cover and roll, and then you yeah. count. Ah. Boom. Like, it worked perfectly when I finally knocked Vanderlei out with it. Yeah, because he, he, he goes, uh, you're like, not this time, yeah. I'm like, bop. Yeah. Man, it, it helped me there. It helped me when I fought Ego Volchanchin. Mm. But with the Ego one, I didn't, I, Ego, I didn't come back punching. I, I did the cover and roll, and I went and picked, up, <laughs> picked him up. That guy, that, guy, that guy was a monster, and it was a short notice fight. Ego was nasty. He, he, he was knocking everybody out, and they... I can't. I'm bad with years, but it was so long ago, and uh, it was like a short notice fight, like two weeks notice fight. Mm. In that in that uh, video, oh, though, there people don't know about Igor. Yeah, he was real crazy with the way he, his style, but I felt like you beat up a lot of guys like that. Like, how did you know Vanderlei was gonna kind of do that to you? Because uh, I this is like my third time fighting him. See, this is the thing. When my first my first time fighting Vanderlei, I knew that I could beat him with the cover and roll. And I was watching his videos. It's the only guy I ever watched all his fights, right? But I psyched myself out. I was like, oh, no, I'm not fast enough. Because mm. he's fast. I thought I wasn't fast enough to come back. And I was I was training with jujitsu guys, getting ready for, for him. I didn't have yeah. I didn't have sparring partners up back then. So I was worried, I was worried about him. So I was covering roll. You can you only supposed to do it three times. Then you're supposed to fire back. But I was doing it too much. He grabbed my head in the clinch. In the, in the clinch and need me. So if you if you don't fire back, you, you there looking stupid. I mean, bro, that, <laughs> yeah, that video, that, no, that yeah. video of him doing it, I mean, I've watched it over and over because I'm trying to learn boxing. I'm just trying to learn. And obviously, it's a little bit different with boxing gloves. He, he has his, obviously, his big hands a lot bigger than me. We're at, like the same height, but he's thicker than me and like stronger than me. But I'm very it, thick. It, <laughs> I don't think we're, we're, we're out there. He goes, he goes, hey, we got the champion here, WO champion. And uh, Ramage goes, yeah, I'm the champion of BBC. And he, he was like, <laughs> yeah, he went over his guy. I was like, like, I, I, I'm the BBC. I'm the I was BBC like, in front of everybody, he just said that. And then I thought to myself, is there a BBC belt? <laughs> <laughs> I, got the, I got the BBC belt. Yeah. And I was like, oh, maybe he does have it. But I don't think that cover roll will work in boxing unless I really don't want to say this on, on camera. So I'm hoping most boxers ain't watching this. I, you know, I'm thinking about doing boxing, so I'm thinking the only way the cuff and roll will help me in boxing is if I act like I'm hurt. And, yeah. And boxers trying to do an onslaught, trying to take yeah, me yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, it's like, pop. I mean, you're yeah. still strong. I've watched him hit, and he's got his coach and his team here. So, we, I mean, you're getting ready. I'm, hopefully, we could see it again live and direct. That would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. Seeing Rampage do a cover and roll in, like, 2024, 2025 would be fantastic. Yeah, but in boxing, I just don't see it working in boxing, though. You never know. Unless, unless. Unless you're hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I saw you hurt. take your hat off, you guys kind of obviously have, like, the same structure, same facial structure. You guys look like brothers, same look. But I what can't. What the fuck? Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys, you guys kind of look like twins. With your hair and your your head, he and could I, be my mini me. <laughs> and I've been looking up photos on the internet. Like you've looked the same since you were like nineteen. Like kind yeah. of shaved head and like you just kind of have the same look. It looks like you haven't aged. Yeah. Have, exactly have you always same. been bald? Uh, yeah, since high, uh, since high school. Yeah, you started balding in high school. Yeah, unfortunately, I started receding hairline, man. Damn. Yeah, I just I, started in like forty. Oh, good for you. What do you mean? Yours looks good. Man, I'm bald, man. How? This, 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 is, this is fake. This beautiful model over here. Uh, you know, Gary, I'm so tired yeah. of this guy. Yeah, he's laughing at, at, at our, like, imperfections. <laughs> he walks around looking like Zac Efron. His shirt's off in the gym. He's ripped. I'm like, yo, get out of here, bro. Like, it's it's bad enough that you're a good fighter. It's even worse that you walk around like a model because now you're a good fighter and you could beat up people that try to bully you. Can you so. just do a model modeling gig over... Uh... I just did a little something with Hugo Boss. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, <laughs> I saw I just did a little I something saw, with Hugo Boss. I saw it, I was, I was like, look at this pretty <laughs> ass walking out of that runway. Good for you. He looks like Peaky Blinder. He's got the trench coat yep, on. He's yep. walking on. I'm like, bro, stop, bro. It's yeah. too much. Hey, I can't handle it anymore. Hey, Why you want to do bare knuckle if you a model? Like, let's, let's get all the cuts and stuff on your face. <laughs> <laughs> you got to earn your way to the walk. <laughs> 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 the kids just walk for free, dog. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't want me unless I'm still fighting. Yeah. Wow. I fucking love that. So before we let you go, this is obviously an amazing time to have him here. Rampage, obviously, bringing in the biggest and the best guests and uh, uh, a legend in the sport. Do you have any thoughts on PFL acquiring Bellator? I think it's good. 
Yeah. I honestly, why not? I, I think obviously bringing those two uh, organizations together, you're going to see some different fights. The only thing that I, that makes me sad is I really enjoyed when you saw PF, uh, no, excuse me, Bellator and Ryzen. They would do the cross promotion because there was no other organization that does that, right? Yeah. I really enjoyed seeing AJ McKee take on a, a Roberto Satoshi, like seeing the champions and champions in Asia fight the champions in um, America. So I think at the end of the day, they're signing big checks. People are winning, you know, a million dollar if they win a tournament. And, yeah. you know, it gives people off there, man. Yeah, there's yeah. great fighters too. I think Jason Jackson's the best welterweight in the world. Jason and Jackson, oh yeah, he just beat the champion. I've been training with him for a long time and I've known it for a long time. And he's coming to a point where he's pretty much unbeatable. I think, mm. even, I mean, anyone in the UFC, I put him against anybody. That's mm. a lot. Anyway, yeah. Jason Jackson, he's just well-versed everywhere and he's just disciplined and he's focused. I mean, yeah. that's what's up. There's a lot of other tough guys in there, but I mean, like that, that dude, dude could be. Yeah. yeah, he just won. Crossover both ways. He had an mm. amazing fight. You gotta catch a flight. What's up? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're about to we're about to wrap up right now. Yeah. So before we go, um, Rampage, obviously, I appreciate you always, like always. No, it's all you know, good. Mighty Mouse, the one and only, the GOAT, Luke Rockwell, just barging in and doing what he does hey, best. I love, I love yeah. Yeah. Luke yeah. Rockwell taking over a room, what's usual. Um, is is there any regrets in the UFC? You have any regrets? Anybody you no. wish you could have fought? Anybody you wish you could still fight? No, nah, no regrets. I, I enjoyed my career in um, the UFC. I think it was good. You know, if, if I if I had to say one regret, I wish I would have gotten like a Connor card and have pay-per-view points. Because everybody I talked to who's been on those cards, like Tyron Woodley, Eddie Alvarez. Woodley in the gold mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he was like, and it's just, hey, it's like, just, hey, it's hey. a, it's a different level. Like even other actors I talked, talked to who, who fought con or been on the same card and have every points. Like dog, it was like it wasn't even the fucking same. He goes, I didn't even want to come back and fight. So those one yeah. regret. Other than yeah. that, I, I'm, I'm very happy with my career there. Oh, of course, and I think we all know how accomplished you are, and it's amazing too when you ask every fighter. You're every fighter's favorite fighter, you know. Thanks. So it's kind of cool, and and obviously it's amazing to have you here. I know the community appreciates everything Rampage has been doing. We're just trying to put on a good show for combat sports worldwide, and we're happy we could talk to, you know, UFC legends and yeah. MMA legends, boxing legends, and we have some crazy guests coming on. But this is a big honor. It's yeah. For you oh no, down likewise, down man. Likewise, always yeah. good to see you, man. Yeah, always. Good yeah. to see him. Very nice. Me and you guys chop it up. I love it. Prestige worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> Boats and hoes. Boats and hoes. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we're out. Uh, we're uh, out. We're out. Yeah, we out. We out.